On a night where Georgia Southern pays tribute to his biggest football legends, Coach Irk Russell, and number three, Adrian Peterson, we welcome you to Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia, for Sunbelt Conference football. Tonight, it's the New Mexico State Aggies taking on the Georgia Southern Eagles. And good evening, I'm Matt Stewart, joined by former Penn State star and 12-year NFL defensive end, Tioka Jackson. Tioka, New Mexico State, 0-2 in the conference. They've been close. They've just got to figure out how to close out some of these close games and get a win, while Georgia Southern just trying to get a win. They're 0-4. It's their worst start since 1941. Yeah, New Mexico State really gets off to good starts, but is struggling finishing the games, and it's just the opposite for Georgia Southern. They get off to horrible starts, and it's hard for them to come back running this option offense. Well, both quarterbacks taking center stage here tonight. Two very different quarterbacks for the Eagles. It's Shy Wirtz, and for the Aggies, it's Tyler Rogers. Yeah, these two quarterbacks hold the keys for the respective offenses, but they're driving vastly different cars. New Mexico State's fifth-year senior Tyler Rogers does his damage through the air. He is number two in the nation in passing yards and is making his case as the greatest QB in Aggie history. He's got a deep group of receivers and an excellent pair of all-purpose backs. Meanwhile, Georgia Southern quarterback Shy Worth started the first game of the season versus Auburn. He became the third freshman quarterback in Eagle history to do that. And he's a big-time athlete who's a nightmare in space. Now, he's still learning the nuances of the quarterback position on the fly, but the future for he and this extremely young offense is super, super bright. It's the Eagles and the Aggies. New Mexico State's aggressive defense led by Terrell Hanks trying to slow down Georgia Southern's option offense. Opening kick is coming up next. Back at Paulson Stadium, just about set for the opening kickoff. Georgia Southern won the opening toss. They have deferred to the second half, so the Aggies will receive the opening kickoff. 81 degrees, slight breeze, four miles per hour, zero chance of rain. Spectacular October night for Sunbelt football. Georgia Southern leads the all-time series. 3-0, winning last year 22-19 in Las Cruces. And the opening kick will sell out of the back of the end zone, and so the Aggies will start at the 25-yard line. Big challenge for the Aggies this week in the words of head coach Doug Martin, don't let App State beat us twice. Emotionally challenged not to have a hangover from that tough loss last week in Boone. Very important words for a young football team. You know, these, these tough losses can really stay with you, but he's going to earn his money teaching these young players how to get over tough losses and how to get back and playing good football because that's what they got to do to beat this team tonight. Tyler Rogers, 16 touchdown passes. That's tied for third in the nation. Jason Huntley starts at tailback. And Huntley's going to pick up about six yards on the play. So Jason Huntley starting in place of the injured Larry Rose, who's officially questionable tonight after banging his knee against App State last week. That's a big loss because Rose is a tremendous back, one of the better backs they've ever had here. He's averaging 6.1, and he was going to be my player to watch, but he's not, he's not playing. So the young Mr. Huntley's going to have to carry the load tonight. Rodgers going to throw it to Huntley. Second consecutive touch for Huntley. And Huntley's going to be brought down at the 30-yard line. Nice open field tackle by Tamarcio Reese as we take a look at the impact players when the Aggies have the ball. We talked about Rose. That's a big loss for this Aggie team. And then for the Eagles, they are so happy to have their guy back, the quarterback of the defense in Moon. They'll need his leadership and playmaking against this Aggie offense all day long. Third down and five for the Aggies. Aggies, one of the best teams in the nation on third down conversions. Number two in the conference, just under 50%. Heavy rush, pass is complete. That's a first down to O.J. Clark. And Clark up across the 50 and down to the 48-yard line. Tackled right at the 48. That was Daryl Baker with the stop and a first and ten. Georgia Southern went man coverage across the board and had a single high safety. And when you got man coverage, you have better make the tackle when your guy catches it. That didn't happen. First down. Jesse Liptrot ended up making that tackle for the Eagles. Short gain on second down. If any gain at all right there. De La Rosa on the tackle on the run by Huntley. Huntley had a huge game last week against App State. 
81 yards rushing, three catches for 111, including a 61-yard catch and run against the Mountaineers. Well, he's very explosive. He's the fastest player on his Aggie team, and so they're losing not a whole lot with him starting in place of Rose. Second down, Rodgers fires, and Kramer gets jacked up by Tamarcio Reese at the 44, and a flag comes out. We might have our first look at a targeting call here early in this ballgame. And it's so interesting. We talked about this pregame. The targeting rule is one of the toughest calls for the officials. It's, it's happening all over college football as they try to clean up the physicality in this game, and it's tough because as a defender, physicality is a the part of what you do. The incomplete. Crush targeting. Number 33 on the defense. The previous play is under further review. Ted Pitts is our referee. You heard the call from him targeting. That means that our replay official, Bill Merritt, will be taking a look at this in the booth. It's just a quick slant, and Reese was waiting for it, and I honestly cannot see how you can call that targeting. If you're going to call this targeting, I just don't know how you play defense anymore. I mean, that was not an intent to lower the head and strike a guy. I got the sneaking feeling here, Matt, that that may be one of those deals that gets overturned. I mean, that's, that's a bang-bang play. It's tough to play defense nowadays. I mean, my day, that's a, that's a beautiful hit. Yeah, in fact, they used to have highlight reels on tackles like that, and it's very difficult because, you know, kids have grown up their entire life learning how to tackle, be physical at the point of the, uh, of the, of the offense and the defense meeting there, and yeah. it's hard to... Call it back, dial it back. We'll see as they take a look at this in the booth if targeting will be the call. And it's the evolution of our game. You know, football right now is sort of, I've said it before, fighting against itself, trying to figure out what's legal and what's not. Obviously, with the health of the players at the top of their mind, and I'm all for that. Let's protect the players as much as possible. But I think that situation is really tough to call targeting because it's, it, there was no long five yard run up to make a guy, uh, to put your face in a guy's face mask or chest. That was a bang-bang play. He's, he's playing zone coverage. The receiver runs into his zone. He turns and makes a tackle. I, I just, you know, they may call it targeting, but they need to change the rule if they do. Another look at it right here. This is what Bill Merritt is looking at right now. And certainly, if you want to meticulous, which they should be, there was a little bit of a drop of the head. Tiny bit of lowering, but I don't know how you can tackle him without doing that. And that was Jonathan Boone, 13 and not 11, who made the grab for the Aggies right there. Now the question remains was it targeting on Tamarcio Reese, who is probably their best linebacker? It would be very difficult for Georgia Southern to move or lose their best linebacker here in the opening series of this game. And it was a tremendous hit. So you'll see a jar from the receiver. You see Boone really react to it. But that's football, folks. That's tackle football in the United States of America. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Targeting number 33 has been disqualified from the game. First and 10. Well. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to feel terrible for Reese. You got to feel terrible for Georgia Southern. I mean, that's, man, I, I'm really at a loss for words, and that, that's not easy to get me at a loss for words, but I just don't know how you can play defense if you're going to call that sort of hit in zone coverage and a bang-bang play. But they did, and next man up, got to move on. So first and ten for the Aggies. Play action. Rodgers under a heavy rush, throws it over here and out of bounds. So they were already, with Joshua Moon still a little bit gimpy, expecting their leader at free safety to be able to play here in this ball game. But now they lose to Marcio Reese, their top linebacker. And Rashad Bird has made his way onto the field to replace Reese. Bird, the redshirt freshman out of North Augusta. Now second down and 10. Play action again. Rodgers fires across the middle, wide open inside the 10-yard line. Big-time catch by Anthony Muse at the 6. And guess who they threw the ball over top of? Their new guy, Rashad Bird. Zone coverage again, and Bird's got to get better depth. That's an easy throw and catch behind the linebacker and in front of the safety. And if you allow Tyler Rodgers a clean look from the pocket, 
with an open receiver over the middle, he won't miss him. He's just too good. First and goal to go from the five. Great job by Rodgers to recognize the new player on the field and take advantage of it. Rodgers on the keeper, going to get into the end zone and score. So Rodgers takes it in from five yards out, and the Aggies score in the opening two and a half minutes to take the 6-0 lead. Basic read option, assignment football, your option to option team, and great job by Rodgers making the right decision, and there's a missed tackle. That was De La Rosa who whiffed on him in the backfield, had a chance to drop him for a loss. Instead, Rodgers takes it in for the touchdown, his fifth rushing touchdown of the season as Dylan Brown is on for the PAT. Kramer holds, and Brown puts it through, and the Aggies have taken a 7-0 lead. An eight-play, 75-yard drive. Tyler Rogers takes it in for six, and the Aggies have the early lead here in Statesboro. Back in Statesboro, Georgia, where New Mexico State has taken a 7-0 lead on Georgia Southern. Tioka, what happened on this touchdown run? Well, we were going to talk about one of the keys for the Aggie defense being Simon football, but you're going to see a missed assignment right now by Chris De La Rosa. He's got the quarterback. The dive is taken by the defensive back. He decides to go for the dive. One half step of hesitation is all it takes. And then the quarterback's outside and out the gate and scoring a touchdown. You have got to get your assignment. Go get your guy. If you hesitate, as I will talk about later, you will get burned. Eagles wearing their Irk Russell classic uniforms. The gray with the blue piping down the sideline and the gold stripe as well. And the kickoff is going to be taken at the nine-yard line. Miles Campbell comes to the near side, and Campbell still on his feet. And Campbell finally driven out of bounds by Dalton Harrington at the 34-yard line. You'll notice as part of the tribute tonight, every one of the Georgia Southern football players wearing the number three on their helmet. That is in honor of former running back Adrian Peterson, who's been inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Very short kickoff and great blocking at the point of attack, and just really good picking up the hole by Campbell, and he decides to... Go towards the left sidelines and pick up additional yardage, and that's a good starting position for his Georgia Southern offense. Here's Shy Wirtz, the redshirt freshman quarterback for the Eagles, making his fifth career start. He's gotten better every week on a 100-plus rushing game in the last game against Arkansas State. Wesley Fields with the first carry of the ball game, and Fields is going to be dropped at the 34-yard line. Picked up only one on the play is Javon Ferguson, starting at linebacker instead of Fa Messino, made the tackle. You're going to see a heavy dose of option out of this spread attack. They spread you out to create natural passing and running lanes, though, but they want to run the football. That's what this offense is all about, running the football through these open lanes. So second down and nine. The Eagles have man down on their offensive line tonight. They run the option. They pitch the field. Field's got room. Fields up to the 48-yard line. Big game for Fields right there. Ferguson makes the tackle. But that's a first down for the Eagles. And this is not your mom and pops option offense. This spread option has a lot of different variations off of it. And what I like there, they pulled two offensive linemen on that option play to get lead blockers out in front of Fields. And he does a great job of setting up his blocks. You see outside, got a big guy leading them in number 61, Drew Wilson. And Great job starting there with a big first or second down run, I should say. First and ten, they run option to this side. Fields again. Fields picks up about five or six in the play down to the 44-yard line as we take a look at the impact players when the Eagles have the ball. Yeah, Ramsby has 34 rushing touchdowns for his career, but only one so far. He's the leader of this crowded backfield. They need him to put the ball in the end zone. And for the Aggies, keep an eye on Dalton Harrington. Shouldn't be hard because he averages 10 tackles per game, which is top 10 in the nation. And that's Ramsby with the run and Harrington making the tackle on that play right there down to the 39 as the Eagles pick up their second first down. It's going to be a big, big key to this game all day. Can the Eagles stay on schedule, get positive yards on first and second down? It's going to be huge. They are not a throwing football team. They want to throw when you think they're going to run. But if you get, in, get them in passing situations, it's a horrible situation for them. They need positive yards on first and second down. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. Fullback Ramsby gets the carry. Ramsby lowers his shoulder, picks up about seven yards down to the 32. LaForce making the tackle for the Aggies. 
And a big uh, seven, eight-yard pickup for Ramsby right there. He had one of his two career 100-yard rushing games against this Aggies team back in his freshman year of 2014. Well, Matt, he's averaging 4.6 a rush, and that's pretty doggone good. It'll help you move the chains. Harrington meets Fields before he can get to the stick, stops him at the 30-and-a-half-yard line. Dalton Harrington, you mentioned him. He's number one in the Sun Belt, tied for 10th in the nation, averaging 10 tackles per game. He's also number one in the Sun Belt in tackles for loss and number four in sacks. Not the biggest, or strongest, or fastest, but boy, can he diagnose, break down, and make tackles. And that's what it's all about, playing linebacker. Toss goes to Garrett. Monteo Garrett down to the 29-yard line. He's close to the first down. Just the sixth carry of the season for Garrett. But he had a big 74-yard touchdown run against Arkansas State in their last game, and they want to get him the ball more. Yeah, he's a home run threat for this team. They got a lot of backs. It's, again, like I said before, it's a very crowded backfield, but every guy has a role. Ransby's a little bit tougher and a bigger, stronger back. Wesley Field's a combo back. But when they get the ball to Garrett, they're looking for home run plays. Take it to the house type guys, what he is. Fourth down, they're going for it. Keeper Wirtz got the first down, and Wirtz lunges forward to the 25. The Eagles 0 for 2 on fourth downs against Arkansas State. Convert on their first fourth down opportunity here tonight. Well, they're one of the worst third down converting offenses in the country. But if you can get it on fourth down, third down doesn't matter too much. But the key to the whole deal is it was fourth and short because they got positive yards early in the series. That's their seventh fourth down conversion this season. That's number one in the Sun Belt. First and ten from the 25-yard line. Handoff goes Fields. Big hole for Fields. And he picks up about eight or nine yards right there on that play. LaForce making the tackle. But Georgia Southern able to run the ball on New Mexico State here in the first quarter. And the reason why is because they're big guys right now. They're always on the hot seat every single week. Their offensive line has struggled most of the season. And because of that, this team has struggled. When this offensive line dominates the line of scrimmage, this offense is really tough to stop. Garrett on the carry, and Garrett down to the 14, and that'll be a first down or close to it. Tommy Boynton, their starting left tackle, not available here tonight. He's out with an injury. Ryan Northrup moves over from left guard and starts for him at left tackle, and Jake Edwards moves up and starts for Northrup at left guard. Now, if you're the Aggie defense, you've got backup linemen starting this game. That defensive line needs to come step up and come alive here. They're getting whipped early. They need to do something about it. Handoff goes to Garrett again. Garrett's going to stonewall the last scrimmage. No running room for Garrett right there. Will Costner in on that tackle along with Terrell Hanks. Actually lost a, maybe a half yard on the play. They say that Roy Lopez, number 51, was in on that tackle as well. Sophomore defensive tackle. Tremendous job of penetrating the backfield. Did a swim move. That swim move by a defensive tackle in the run game is not what you teach, but if you do it, you better go make the play. That's exactly what Lopez did. Second down and long for the Eagles. Already picked up four first downs on this drive alone. They only average 15 a game. And off Ramsby. That's going to bring up a third down and long as now they're facing a what would typically be a passing situation for most teams. <laughs> right. And this is the area, or I should say the time in the schedule of the series where, where it gets really tough for the Eagles. Third and long. They're not built this way. They're not built to drop back, read the defense, and throw the football. They're built on throwing when you think they're going to run. Well, right now, Pass is really what's called for, and he wouldn't shock either one of us if they run the football right here because, again, this young quarterback, he got to really play his confidence and push his confidence up in this game. On third down, play action. Wolf's got room to run on the edge. Fakes a pass inside the 10, slides down at the two-yard line. First down for Shea Wirtz. Or Shy Wirtz, pardon me. Shy Wirtz with the first down. Love the call by Brian Cook. But it's, yes, it's a pass play, but it's a run option on it. Just run the bootleg. He's got one read. If it's there, throw it. If it's not, run the football. And what I liked about the young player is he got down. He's not trying to play superhero. He gets down, slides, stays healthy. Let's play another down. They spot it at the three. First and goal to go. And off Ramsby. Met at the one and a half. Absolutely love that call on third down. You're going to see a lot of bootlegs in this game from the Eagles, and the Aggie defense has got to have a guy on the outside setting that edge. If not, 
Wirtz is going to be a torture for them all day long. Brings up a second and goal from the two after Ramsby got one. This is the 14th play of the drive, and Ramsby got in. L.A. Ramsby with his second touchdown of the season and the 35th of his career pulls the Eagles to within a point. Look at the effort by Ransby. You think he didn't hear what I said? He's got to get in that end zone. Only one touchdown is not going to cut it. You're a senior. You're a fifth-year senior. They need your leadership, and that's leadership right there. Second effort is what it's going to take to win this game. Nice job by Ransby in this offensive line. Every one of the running backs for the Eagles, Ramsby, Fields, and Garrett, were high school quarterbacks <laughs> in option offenses. Yeah. And I think they're going to send this one under review to see if Ramsby got in as Ted Pitts puts on the headset. Whenever they go to review, the first thing you got to understand is what's the call on the field. And right now the call is touchdown. So there has to be indisputable video evidence showing that it was not a touchdown to get this over, overturned and let's see what we can see. Well, he was definitely stopped at the one, but I think his body lean with the second effort got him across. Watch him twist and turn. He's going to get stoned there initially by two players, but he's going to spin off the contact and lean that ball over that goal line. That's a touchdown to us. Yeah, and I think the key is what you just said there. Remember that the call on the field is a touchdown, and the two replays we saw right there do not provide any evidence After to overturn further review, that. the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. That was great initial contact by Terrell Hanks. He stepped up and made really nice contact, but he didn't run his feet, partner. You got to run your feet on contact. If you don't, you don't get run over. He actually had help from a second defender. But like we talked about before, Ransby knows he has to show leadership. Second effort is what it's going to take, and he did a great job there. Tyler Bass on for the PAT, 6 for 6 this season. Matt Flynn, the punter, is his holder. And the kick is up and good, and we're tied at 7. 15-play, 67-yard drive took more than 7 minutes. That's quintessential Georgia Southern option offense. We're tied at 7 in the Five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Matt Stewart along with Tyoka Jackson. We're tied at seven in the Sun Belt tilt. Both these teams looking for their first conference win of the year. The Eagles looking for their first overall win. That was a 15-play, 67-yard drive, 32 of the yards in the drive belonging to Wesley Fields. L.A. Ramsby took it in. He scored the touchdown. He had 17 of the yards, and Shy, Shy Wirtz had 15 of the yards as well. The story for that drive right there, for the Eagles was an offensive line. And they did a great job of run blocking on the perimeter, but especially also inside. They were able to get a lot of good first down yardage up inside, and that was a problem for them, or has been a problem for them all year. And that's not my words talking, that's Brian Cook saying that. So he obviously uh, has challenged this offensive line, and they're stepping up early. We'll see if they can continue to do it all night. Kick is going to be taken five yards deep by Gregory Hogan. He will not return it. So the Aggies will come out to the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the keys to the game when the Aggies have the ball. New Mexico State needs to get out to an early lead because it's hard for an option quarterback and an option offense to come back from a deficit. And defensively, for the Eagles, if the Eagles defense can make the Aggies one-dimensional, there should be plenty of opportunity to make Tyler Rogers force the ball downfield. We know they can turn him over because Rogers turned it over, what, six times yep. last week? And so the key is it can't be two-dimensional. If you can run it and throw it, you got problems. If they stop this run and rush Rogers, they can have some success. First and 10 from the 25. Remember, the Eagles are already without their top linebacker, it's Marcio Reese, who was ejected for targeting, targeting pardon me, on the opening possession. Jason Huntley gets the carry for the Aggies, and... Huntley's up to the 30-yard line. Five-yard pickup for Huntley. Raymond Johnson making the tackle for the Eagles. We said Huntley was a very capable backup. Very explosive. Look at the jump cut there. Beautiful job. The vision's there. I really like this kid. I know you love him. He's a very exciting football player. Second down. Aggies playing without Larry Rose so far in this game. 
As Huntley tried to get to the edge and couldn't, Raymond Johnson in on that tackle for a second consecutive play. They really like Raymond Johnson, too, number 92 for the Eagles. Zoe Constantini, their defensive coordinator, believes he's one of three freshmen he has on that defensive line with NFL potential. Yeah, and you very rarely hear college coaches talk like that. So at once he said it, I was excited to watch him live. He surely shows up on tape with his quickness, and he's doing the same thing here. He's getting in the backfield big time so far. Third down for the Aggies. Rodgers has time, fires, complete to O.J. Clark. That'll be a first down at the 45-yard line, 41-yard line, pardon me, 45. R.J. Bird made the tackle. Listen, if this is your first time seeing this Aggie offense, if you do not rush Tyler Rodgers, you can forget about it, especially against zone coverage. He has not, he has seen, I should say, he's seen everything. There's nothing you can show him he hasn't seen. He's a fifth-year senior. I mean, there is no zone coverage that's going to confuse the guy. No rush, that's a problem. That was Rashad Bird making the tackle for the Eagles. He's the guy that's replaced Reese out there defensively. Deep, it's caught, wide open, and there goes Hogan for the touchdown. Hogan got behind Murray, the safety, and a long touchdown pass for Tyler Rogers, and the Aggies are back on top 13-7. to seven. My goodness. You got to love Rogers. How many times have you seen quarterbacks in this situation where a guy wide open, underthrows it woefully, has to make his guy stop? Not here. Rodgers will burn you if you're going to give him wide open receivers and no rush. That's just the way it is. This guy's been doing it for too long. He's moving up in the all-time passing yards for a reason, and he might leave this game as the number one passer in all of America the way things are going right now. Dylan Brown out there for the PAT. Kramer gets the hold down, and 14-7, 59-yard touchdown pass for Tyler Rodgers. It's his 17th touchdown pass of the season. Greg Hogan on the other end, his first touchdown catch of the year, and the Aggies have a 14-7 to lead. Back in Statesboro, three and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. We've had three possessions, three touchdowns. New Mexico State on top, 14-7. Here's the 59-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, this is the anatomy of a long touchdown pass. Watch the safety on the far hash up top of your screen. He's going to get him back on the stop there. You got to stay in your back pedal. He misread the route. It was a, a beautiful route, really, a post route that made the safety turn his hips. And when he turns his hips, you get even. You are leaving. That's a beautiful throw, great route, and bad technique by the safety, R.J. Murray. This is like a tennis match. Whoever gets their serve broken might be the team that loses here. It's 14-7 so far with three and a half to play in the opening quarter. Another short kick. And Campbell comes up to the 12 to take it. And Campbell fires through a hole up across the 40 and out to the 44-yard line. The force making the tackle for the Aggies, but another nice return. Aggies have really struggled with their kickoff coverage this season. They are number 11 in the conference, 121st in the nation. It all starts with the short kick, and then this beautiful blocking at the point of attack, really. I mean, it's just straight ahead running, nothing cute at all. Just getting a hat on a hat, and he's running hard and breaking tackles. Talk about Miles Campbell, but they've got to find a way to kick that ball deeper. I mean, you catch that football around the 12-yard line, 15-yard line, that's a problem for your coverage team. First and 10 from the 44. Good field position for the Eagles as they begin their second possession. Wirt's going to throw the ball. It's complete to Campbell. Campbell, who just had the kick return, gets across the 50 and down to the 43-yard line in a first down. I like what Campbell's giving him. He's giving him all-purpose yards with the return game and, and now catching the pass. And you can just see with his body language, he's running with physicality. He's not very big, 5'6", 165 pounds, but he doesn't care. Watch him attack the defenders and get more yardage for his offense and what they're doing is just they're, they're doing a great job of protecting this freshman quarterback and making easy throws and his guys are making plays for him he's a fifth year senior he's already graduated from georgia southern and a nominee for the american football coaches association state farm all good works team handoff goes to ramsby no running room for him that time as harrington makes the tackle for the aggies harrington had nothing of it there I mean, if you run the ball inside you've got to get number 31 blocked it's just as simple as that if you don't he's going to ruin your inside running game and that's exactly what happened 
on that play. Frank Spaziani is the defensive coordinator for the Aggies team, former Boston College head coach. Says Harrington is a guy that's not the best guy physically, but because he does so much homework, he can react quicker than guys who just go out there and react. Yeah, don't give me a guy who runs 4-5 but plays like he's 4-9. I'll take the 4-9 guy who plays like he's 4-5 because he's playing it from the neck up. Handoff goes to Fields. Fiend gets him on the ground as... We take a look at the keys to the game when Georgia Southern has the ball. The Eagles must sustain long drives in order to win this game. Third down efficiency is going to be key. And then for the other side, it's just basically going to be defending the option. It's assignment football, folks. The Aggies defense must know who they got and go get them without hesitation or they'll get gassed. And we saw earlier this Eagle defense hesitate and get gassed on that running play for the touchdown. It's third down and seven. Wirtz fires it over here. Missed his man. Obi Fortune was his intended target at the 35-yard line as the Eagles failed on third down right there. Let's see if they go for it. It's fourth down and about seven, though. It's a, it's a long seven, and I don't know that you want to give the Aggies a short field here, Tyoka. I think you want to pin them and try to get the ball, force a turnover down here. Well, there's no question. you got to play the field position. I mean, you got to kick the ball and try to get that ball inside the five. Don't give them any short fields, really. That would be a mistake. And, be a momentum burst as well. That last play, Terrell Hanks came in with a great pass rush and just blew that play up right from the start. Jaden Wright is deep for the Aggies. Flynn with the high kick. It's going to hit at the four. The Eagles have a chance to down this one inside the five, and they will. Nice punt by Matt Flynn, who averages just under 41 a kick. He made that thing bounce up and down at the four-yard line. That's a big play. I mean, how many times have you seen punters just kick the ball mindlessly right into the end zone? That's a great job of making that ball bounce and stick just like your nine irons do in the fairway, right? I mean, I'm sure Not you— Not quite. No? Okay, sorry, wrong guy. But, no, he, <laughs> great job there getting that ball inside the five, and we'll see how this the rest of the series goes, but that's something that coaches will be highlighting tomorrow as a potential big play that just won't show up on the stat sheet. Fourth kick inside the 20 for Flynn this season. Now the Aggies start from their own four-yard line, leading 14-7. to seven. Nothing doing for Huntley. Still have not seen Rose. Huntley lost a couple of yards on that play right there. Ty Phillips, their defensive tackle, made that stop right there. They really like this kid, too. He played offense last year. That's right. And he's done a great job since they moved him to that side of the ball. And he got some help on that play by Rashad Bird as well, who we know is filling in for, uh, for Reese. Play action. Ball is caught in the back in the end zone by O.J. Clark, and he runs it out of there up to the eight-yard line. Very dangerous play as they run a screen to O.J. Clark, and he's going to be close to a first down. Yeah, he's a very quick player. They love to get the ball in space to him, and almost too tall. But he used all of that five foot seven frame to jump up and go get it. Pretty good defense, though, to react to a guy who's that quick and not let him turn the corner. No, it's going to be third down and seven. I thought he got more than that. So it's a long third down coming up for the Aggies right here at the eight yard line. Man coverage again. No safety in the hole. Quick fire and dropped. Huntley crossing route would have had the first down. He dropped it. And now the Aggies have to punt out of their own end zone with 17 seconds to play in the quarter. Yeah, I mean, that's no excuse for that. That's an easy catch, an easy first down. Right now we see the early game plan from this Eagle defense to play man coverage across the board. They obviously feel like they can lock up the receivers and get that pass rush home. But right now I've seen receivers running open. Just that time, Huntley dropped the football. Theisler on the kick for the Aggies. The sophomore averaging 39.7 a kick. He's about eight yards deep in the end zone. Rugby-style kick. Going to hit at the 39. Campbell's going to slide under and take it at the 48-yard line. Crowd wanted a flag. Thought there had been some unsportsmanlike conduct right there. The officials keep the flags in their pockets. No, that, there's no flag there. Now, if that was a quarterback, <laughs> yeah. if he was sliding, now he becomes a protected player, and, that, and that's obviously would be a flag, but on a punt return situation, no. And, and what I like, though, Miles Campbell, what he did is he went up and fielded the ball, and he saved yardage for his offense. Yep. You see so many players allow that ball to bounce and continue to bounce and get away from it, and they'll lose up to 15 to 17 yards. Great job. Again, another hidden 
big play, just like the punt was down the inside the five. That's a hidden big play for Miles Campbell, saving field position for the Eagles offense. They're now starting this drive on the plus side of the 50. 11 seconds to play in the quarter. Third possession for the Eagles. Toss goes to Fields. Fields across the 45 to 40. He may go. Fields down the sideline. One man to beat. He'll get to the end zone and score. Perimeter blocking. You can't say enough how important it is on option teams, the perimeter blocking. Look at the blocks outside. And right now, you don't have a guy to touch the running back. That's as easy as it gets for Fields. There's nobody to touch him. He's looking for guys to make moves, but there's nobody free because the offensive line, but more importantly, the perimeter blocking by Ellis Richardson, the tight end, and the wide receivers, Campbell and Fortin, was beautiful. Great execution right there on a lead option play for the Eagles. 48-yard touchdown run. Bass with the PAT. And with 1.1 seconds left in the quarter, we're tied at 14. I mean, the funny thing was he was looking for defenders after the touchdown. He ran for about another 30 yeah. <laughs> in the end zone to the sidelines. He was looking for somebody to make a cut on. And that you made a, was just too easy. And Tayoko, you made a great point. Great perimeter blocking. And that's what the wide receivers do most of in this Georgia Southern offense. Not a lot of receptions, but a lot of blocking out on the edge. Number nine, OB Fortune threw a big block for him to key the final burst to the outside. A 48-yard touchdown run for Wesley Fields, and we're tied at 14. That's the type of play that will end up on the coaches' tape when they go to when high school players or high school coaching staffs come in and try to learn how this this Georgia Southern spread option is supposed to run, that will be on the coach's state because that was just a thing of beauty. A hat on the hat, no defenders getting off. You've got to get off blocks. It's okay to get blocked initially, but you can't stay blocked. It's like Velcro's on the jersey, and, and, and there's nobody to make a move on. Wesley Fields is like, somebody's got to come get me. I'm just going to keep running, and he continues to run. That's 20, that's 25. That's another 30 yards right there. <laughs> Another strong kick by Bass, non-returnable, so we'll have 1.1 seconds to play in the quarter as the Aggies bring it out to the 25-yard line. I think a big key so far has been the drive start average. We, you know, I'm, we're going to have to look and do some research on what the average start is for each one of these teams because you got one kicker kicking the ball in the end zone, you got another kicker kicking it to the 12 or 15 yard line, and that makes a tremendous difference. We also have seen great execution in the punt game for the Eagles. That set up that whole series last, on that last uh, series there, was set up completely by the ball getting down inside the five on the punt. Rodgers on the final play of the first quarter. Fires out here to Huntley. Nice open field tackle by Jesse Liptrot on the final play of the quarter. Beautiful. Got to tackle the outside leg and against a really good football player, too. We know Huntley is the king in space. And that is the end of the first quarter. What a first quarter. 270 yards of total offense for these two teams combined. 14-14 here in Statesboro as we head to the second. And there's a look at Adrian Peterson between quarters here, elected to the College Football Hall of Fame, the all-time leading rusher in Division I history as we start the second quarter. And two big stops by the Eagles on defense. That was Monquavian Brinson there. Back-to-back -back stops behind the line of scrimmage, and now it's third down and long. But you had a chance to play against Adrian Peterson in the league. I did. Very good football player. Could do it all, really, in terms of running, catch the ball, with block, play fullback. Was an excellent special teams player. He's a guy that got all the talent out of his body. A lot of players with more talent, less successful, because it just didn't work as hard as Mr. Peterson did. And he'll visit with us at halftime. Third down and long. Rodgers being chased out of the pocket by Johnson. Johnson got him on the sideline. There's Raymond Johnson again. We've already called his name a number of times here in the first half, and he got himself close to a sack. They will count that as a sack. And just Johnson, guys, only a freshman. Watch the closing speed. 
I mean, that right there is really what you're looking for from an NFL-type prospect. There's a lot of players who have great technique, but when it's time to turn and run, they can't run like that. And that, folks, is a guy who might be playing on Sundays down the road, but just a freshman. Deisler stands at his three-yard line to kick, and Campbell at the 45, and the Eagles are winning the field position battle right now. No question about it. I mean, the drive start average alone we'll talk about. Long punt this time. Campbell has to go all the way back to the 29 to get it. Let's see if he can get a wedge to run behind. No, nope, not going to find anything there. Wright trying to strip him of the ball as he made the tackle at the 30-yard line, and that's where the Eagles will be when we get back. Opening minute and a half of the second quarter. We're tied at 14 here in St Back in Statesboro, Matt stood along with Tioka Jackson as Georgia Southern gets ready to go back on offense at the 32-yard line. But they've had really good field position in this game, and that's a big reason why we're tied at 14. No question. In the first quarter, Georgia Southern's average start was the 43-yard line, and New Mexico State was the 20. Now, that's a stat that most average fans wouldn't understand and wouldn't know to think about. But I'm telling you, the drive start average sets the entire complexion, not only for each series, but the entire game. If you can start near at near the 50, it's a whole different ball game for the offensive coordinator to call plays. First and 10 for the Eagles here early second quarter. Wirtz on the keeper, and Wirtz going to go down at the 35. Just a two-yard gain right there. Harrington involved in that tackle along with Javon Ferguson. I think it's interesting that they've made the change at Mike Linebacker here tonight with Javon Ferguson starting at Mike Linebacker instead of Louis Famasino. This is the lineup they used against New Mexico when they beat the Lobos 30-28. New Mexico runs a similar offense. That's right, and you can't have just a box guy. It would Louis is, Louis is a guy that plays in the box and is really physical between the tackles. But this offense will stretch you on the perimeter. You've got to have a little bit quicker guy to go outside and make plays for you. Second down. High snap. Wirtz brings it in. Going to run some option here and keep it. And Ferguson, who we were just talking about, made the stop right there at the 35-yard line. No gain in a third down and long coming up for the Eagles. Ferguson had help from the outside as well. The defensive line is going to have to continue to get pressure or penetration upfield, I should say, in order to slow this deep, this offense down. And that's a great job against the option. And that's the type of play you need on second down because it sets up the Eagles for third and long. And that's a problem whenever you get the Eagles in third and long. Now, you still may get a run, but it's a lot harder, obviously, to run the football for eight yards than it would be for three and four. Eagles are one for three on their third downs in this game for the season. 21%, which is last in the nation. Works keeper going to go down. This is a three and out for the Eagles. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. They don't want to put Wirtz in a situation where he has to drop back, read an all defensive secondary under pressure. That's not his strong suit. His strong suit is getting on the perimeter, run pass options, and literally just running football with design, running quarterback plays. So when that schedule gets off for them, third and long, that's a problem. Great job by New Mexico State to step up, play great defense on the first and second down to create third and long situation. First three and out for the Eagles offensively tonight. Snap goes back to Lynn, and he booms it out of there. Wright has to retreat all the way back to the 17-yard line. And Wright not going very far. Five-yard return. They finally push him out of bounds back at the 20. They'll spot it at the 22, and that's where the Aggies go back on offense again. Georgia Southern very consistent defensively in giving the Aggies poor field position. They've been averaging around the 20. Well, right now, if you're the Aggies, you got to say we're still one of the better offenses in all of college football. Right now, we have not played our best, and it's still a tie ball game. We need to start executing the way we do every single week, and we can take control of this football game on the road. I think it starts with the run, though. So far, Georgia Southern has done a really good job, save for maybe that first drive, of stopping the run. We talked about that being the key, keeping it one-dimensional. I think New Mexico State has to run the football and set their play action pass. First and 10, Rodgers fires, and it's complete, and bobbled. Hogan lost the ball, and let's see, are they going to rule that it's Eagles ball? No signal from the officials just yet. Hogan caught it, coughed it up, but was he down? The officials have not yet signaled. And now they signal Aggie's ball. So Hogan apparently made the catch, much to the dislike of this Eagles crowd. You'll take another look at it right here. 
and now it's going to go under review. Of course it is. That ball is, is uh, no. Well. The ball was loose. <laughs> yeah. He didn't have control of it on his way down, but it looked like when he hit the ground, he still had his hands on it, and possession changed after his back was on the ground. I think initially we have to make sure that it was a completed pass first. I yep. mean, that's the first thing they're going to look at. Was this an actually or actual completed pass? And then after that, was it a possession and then a fumble right. after? So... Let's take a look at this review. I think it's clear. He, he is losing possession on his way down, but he's on his back when he finally loses possession all the way. That's right. Now, that is a catch. That's first and foremost. And it he's is got a catch. it. And then it's taken well, away when he's already on the ground. But did he ever have possession is the key. I think he, it was certainly a catch. Now, that ball starts to move around before he gets, hits the ground. It's now anybody's football. And I, there, it's completely clear to me that he catches the football and makes a football move. Watch the catch and then turn the run. See, at that point, he puts it away. That's a catch. Now, yep. the ball's now starting the ball to come out. out. Yep. And it's never secured until they are all on the ground. I think, I think you're that's right. Georgia Southern football. I think Monquavian Brinson, who came up with it, came away with the turnover. That will be, I think, a forced fumble officially and a fumble recovery. And what a tremendous play, though. Right? I mean, to, to bat that ball out while you're making the tackle, that's that's the type of effort that it's going to take to get rid of an 0-4 start. Yeah, this Eagles defense forced five takeaways against Arkansas State in their loss two Wednesdays ago, 43-25, which is kind of amazing in itself that they had five takeaways and still lost by a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever heard of a stat like that. But again, there's the catch. He puts it away, so that's done. It's a catch. Now that ball's moving around. And so whoever can secure it at yeah. this point, it's going to be their ball. Yeah, you're right. I think Monquavian Brinson clearly was the one who controlled it at the 32-yard line. We've certainly given Bill Merritt, our replay official, who visited with us before the game, we've given him a workout here in the first half. Yeah, but, but back to that last week for the Eagles. I mean, you go for over 500 yards total offense. You run the football for over 300 yards, and you get – five turnovers and lose the game. Now, I don't know, you know, we got a, a crack staff here. Chris is our stat guy. I don't know if that's ever happened where a team has done those things and still lost the football game. Well, you see Tyson Summers there trying to fire up his troops while they take a look at this play to see if the ball is going to change possessions here. Second season, 5-11. He really believes this team is going to win a lot of games. Their mantra the last couple of weeks is just keep pounding the rock. Yeah, you got it. and that's about building a belief. you, know, you got to believe that if I keep swinging as hard as I can at that rock, I may not see the cracks, but they're happening internally, and eventually on a swing 100, maybe 250, this thing is going to break apart, and that's exactly what they're going through right now. These growing pains, an 0-4 start for a young football team, and we're talking about one of the youngest in college yeah. football. A young football team like that, it's going to pay dividends next year and the year after and the year after that. Only eight seniors on the roster, which is the fewest of any FBS program in the nation. And it looks like Ted Pitts has reached a decision. After further review, the offensive player never possessed the ball. The defensive player did prior to touching the ground. The ball's intercepted. First and 10, 37 yard line. So the Eagles take over at the 33 yard line. I think it's clear. I think that's the right call. Yeah, me too. I mean, that's, that's a catch, no question. Now he tucks it and starts to run, and what a great job of knocking that football out by Brinson. I mean, he that's it. That's why you teach it. You secure the tackle with the left, or the right arm, I should say, and back the ball out from behind with the right arm just in case you don't miss it. You can still make the tackle. That's a beautiful NFL-type play by Montclavian. First and 10 for the Eagles. A chance for them to take their first lead of the game on this possession. Tied at 14. Alert for it. Action pass. Instead of the handoff to Ramsby, and Hanks was the first guy to hit him. Ramsby picks up just a couple of yards on the play. I mean, you're right. I was getting ready to say, typically on a play like that, turnover, take a shot at the end zone, yeah. but hey, this is Georgia Southern. And I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, but Remember, keep pounding the rock. That's right. <laughs> and it's working, so you know, keep it simple, stupid. So second down and eight from the 31. Fields and Ramsby lined up behind Words. And Ramsby gets it again. Hurdles a man. It goes down to the 22. The force grabbed him in the air and held on for dear life. That's going to be close to a first down. It is a first down. Give a lot of credit to this offensive line, and I love the way Ramsey's running this football. Look at this here. 
Man, that's a guy who really cares. He's a senior. He doesn't want to go out like that. 0-4 is not what he was looking for. He didn't sign up for that. But instead of talking and griping about it, he's coming out and being a man of action, and I really, really respect that. Now, again, if you are New Mexico State, the defensive line has got to come alive. They're playing against backup players up there, guys who aren't playing in the same position they practiced just yesterday. you got to come alive and make some plays. Ramsby, third straight carry for L.A. Ramsby as he gets down to about the 18-yard line. Eight first downs already for the Eagles in this game. Remember what I said earlier, they average only 15 a game, so almost half that number, and we've only played uh, 20 minutes. We talked about how slow starts have really shot them in the foot all season. Not here. They've gotten off to a great start, and you can see it's lifting the confidence of the entire football team. I mean, even the sideline, they're really into it. Ramsby comes off the field. The handoff this time goes to Wesley Fields. Bounces off a man and down to the 10-yard line. First down carry for Wesley Fields. I saw Curtis Rainey, the starting center, number 75, just dominate the guy across from him. I mean, he blocked that player until the whistle was blown. And I believe that player is number 51, Roy Lopez. So if your center is controlling the nose guard by himself, there's going to be room to run up inside, which was a key to this ball game. They fire the ball out here. It was tipped. Campbell catches it anyway. And Campbell, nothing doing, gets stopped at the line of scrimmage. That ball was tipped on the pass out to the edge. And fortunately for the Eagles, it didn't get intercepted or fall incomplete. Excellent job of rallying to the football. Zone coverage is being played, and when that ball is thrown in front of you as a zone defender, you have to come up and make the tackle with leverage. Yeah, that was Hanks. No, I, I thought he did. It was just yeah. a wobbly pass. Yeah. Just not a pretty pass. So second down from the 10. Words keeps it this time. He goes down. Great penetration by Harrington that time. Makes him cut back into the defense, and he goes down quickly. That's exactly right. That's one of those things where you get a factor grade. You didn't make the tackle yourself. But you were a big-time factor in creating a tackle for someone else, and penetration will kill every type of running game known to man. Georgia Southern now at 12 minutes and three seconds of possession, nearly double the time for New Mexico State. But that's pretty much typical Georgia Southern anyway. They are number one in the conference, over 34 minutes time of possession on average per game. But now it's a third down and goal from the nine-yard line. And timeout's going to be called by the Aggies. So we'll take a timeout as well. It'll be third down and goal from the nine for the Eagles. When we get back, they're trying to grab their first lead of the game. Big third down for the Georgia Southern Eagles. They have it third and goal to go from the Aggies' nine-yard line in a tie ball game. Georgia Southern has not led in this game. They've been playing from behind since the opening possession. I think a big key is the fact that this third and goal from the nine, no, no ability to get a first down. This has to get in the end zone or they're kicking a the field goal. That makes a huge difference in terms of how this call is made. Ramsby and Fields line up behind Wirtz. Fields to his right. They run option, though they fake option. Wirtz in trouble, scrambles, goes down back at the 15-yard line. Ferguson makes the stop for the Aggies, and now it's going to be fourth down and a field goal situation for Georgia Southern. And like you said, Ferguson makes the stop, but Terrell Hanks made the play. I mean, if you remember on the earlier option play, or I should say bootleg play, there was nobody home when the quarterback turned the corner. Right there, Terrell Hanks did a great job of not panicking, keeping leverage, and turning the ball back, and young Shy Wirtz had nowhere to go. Tyler Bass will attempt a 32 and a half yard kick from the right hash. He's three of six on the season with a long of 43 in the loss against New Hampshire. The kick is on its way, and the kick is good. And the Eagles have their first lead in the game on the field goal by Tyler Bass. So even though Georgia Southern fails on the third down and goal, they're still able to get three points out of it and take the lead. They keep the game close is uber important for them because they do not want to get out of character in what they do offensively. They want to continue to run the football. They want to continue to possess it, run clock, shorten the game. You can only do that when the game is in a tight sprint situation in terms of the score. Three-point lead is perfect for them. Now, if this game gets away from them, that's when they step out of character, and that's when things get to snowball. Now, on the other side of the football, I still think if you're New Mexico State, there's no need to panic. 
you've got guys running wide open who are dropping the football and fumbling the football. They have not been stopped if, if you're an Aggie fan. You think it, right now my team has not been stopped offensively. We've only stopped ourselves with stupid things, turnovers, a couple uh, drop passes. These things are all correctable on the sidelines. Keep doing what you're doing. You're going to move the football and score. That was a silver lining situation really for both teams. The Eagles got their three. The Aggies held them to three after the turnover there at the 28-yard line. Great point. Georgia Southern still looking for their first one of the season, one of five FBS teams that are still winless. Baylor, Utah, Charlotte, UMass, and Georgia Southern. They're trying to change that one here tonight. This will not be returned as the Aggies, again, will start at their 25-yard line. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. The story has not changed. The Eagles are kicking the ball in the end zone. There is no return game so far to speak of. And conversely, the other way, they're kicking it short. Yeah. Great field position starts every single possession for Georgia Southern. There's no doubt. Kick coverage has been big here in the first half of this ball game. Eagles with great kick coverage, limiting the Aggies to no return, while the Aggies kicking short and the Eagles getting great field position because of it. So Aggies back on offense. From their 25. Heavy rush, and Rodgers has to get rid of it. Again, it was Raymond Johnson breathing down his neck. And listen, I'm not criticizing Tyler Rogers because he had a guy right in front of him. But if he was somehow, some way, saw Jason Huntley leak out of that backfield, Huntley would still be running right now. There was nobody there. They went all out blitz. The coverage was blown on the back out of the backfield. I guarantee you, Doug Martin, the offensive coordinator, remembers, will remember, or I should say the head coach and offensive coordinator, will remember that play and come back to it later on in a blitz situation. And again, the Aggies playing without their all-conference running back, Larry Rose. He has not made an appearance here tonight. He's been bothered by a sore knee. Rodgers dancing in the pocket. He's being chased by Cooper this time. Has to throw it away. So again, great pressure from Georgia Southern. Eagles doing a really good job with their front four of bringing pressure. We talked about if they knocked out the run, they could force Rodgers into some tough situations and mistakes. The pressure right now has been the story of the game when Rodgers has stepped back. Everywhere he looks to turn, there is an eagle in his face. Now, they have not stopped the run. For some reason, Doug Martin has gotten away from the run, and I think that's been a problem. Third down and 10. Again, heavy pressure off the edge. Rodgers stands in there, fires downfield. That'll be a first down catch at the 39-yard line and the first catch for Jaleel Scott in a couple of weeks. You'll remember last week at App State, early hip pointer. No factor in the game last week. That's his first catch here tonight. I think Scott got away with a push off at the top of the route, and I'm not sure that this angle would show it to us, but when you see a DB falling down at the top of the route, Asking for a flag, that's a good indication that those arms were extended and Scott created some separation with his arms. Illegally, down of course. And heavy pressure, and Rodgers gets rid of it down the sideline. Scott made the grab, but I believe he was out of bounds. I think he went out of bounds and came back in. That's what the officials have ruled on the sideline. What an effort. <laughs> what an effort to lay off of that ball. He certainly was out of bounds. It won't count, but wow. <laughs> He's here. This is just a 50-50 ball. And Rogers has tremendous confidence in Scott, and why not? The guy can go get it, so clearly out of bounds. Still think Doug Martin needs to run the football. I mean, obviously, Rose being out, he doesn't want to get Huntley hurt. He obviously trusts Hunt. He's in almost every single play. Doesn't want to wear him out, but they've got to run the football some. Empty set. If they're running it here, it's the quarterback. <laughs> Rogers firing across the middle. Caught wide open in stride. Huntley. Down to the 21-yard line, and again, we see the great quickness of Jason Huntley. Daryl Baker finally gets him down inside the 25. Baker had no chance. This guy's too explosive. You can't ask a linebacker to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. That's just not going to happen. The guy's too good. He's too fast. He's too quick. He's got great hands. First and 10 for the Aggies at the Eagles 21. Huntley did this against Arizona State in their opener, which they lost 37-31. He had 128 total yards of offense rushing and receiving against the Sun Devils. They make the handoff to Huntley this time. Rodgers fires and incomplete. Man broke open at the goal line. That was Agonon. And it's going to be second down. I saw why that wasn't completed because that ball looked to be pretty good. That ball was thrown between the corner and the safety. Agonon should have 
at least made a better play on it, as I can see from here. Aganon has only seven catches on the year. Yeah, you got to catch that. I mean, that's that's a touchdown easily. What a great ball from Rodgers. And he's got beautiful touch. If you don't rush this guy, he scans the field, gets his feet set, and delivers the ball. He's as good as anybody. Five and a half to play in the first half. Heavy rush comes from De La Rosa. He gets rid of it to Huntley, and Huntley scrambles forward to the 11-yard line. De La Rosa was bearing down, and now a flag comes out late. So this one's going to go against the Eagles after the play. Look at De La Rosa breathing down Rodgers' neck, and Huntley able to keep his feet and get to the sticks. And then... The late flag on Murray. Yeah, I think it was deserved, too. He was on the ground rolling around. I mean, you got to lay off in that situation. I'm a defensive guy, and I'm all for the defense, but that's uncalled for. Personal foul. Late hit with targeting. Number two on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Wow. First down. Targeting the previous play is under further the review. hit. Well, let's take a that look at That could be it. devastating for the Eagles on the back end. Yeah, Huntley just flat runs away from Rashad Bird. You're going to see the tackle is going to be, or the hit's going to be applied right there. Ooh. He didn't target with the helmet, but he did lead with the shoulder. And remember with the rules saying a defenseless player, this leaves it open for a possible targeting, even though he didn't hit him with the crown of his helmet. I think where he made contact was up, right. up on high up on the head right. neck area the, above the shoulders that's right and that brings the targeting into play as well as the fact that he's defenseless he's rolling around on the ground Correct. so I mean, this never, could be a devastating second targeting ejection for the eagles among their starters in the linebacking and the defensive backcourt it was completely unnecessary this is not the nfl where a guy can get up off the ground and run this is college football when a player with the football hits the ground the play's over yep so even if he had not hit him in the head, it would have been a personal foul just because you hit the guy unnecessarily. The play is over when a ball carrier hits the ground, period. End of play, end of discussion. So just a, just a bad mental mistake right there. Eagles have already had Tamarcio Reese ejected for targeting on the opening series. And now R.J. Murray, the fourth-year junior strong safety, could be headed out of the game as well. And Murray's too good for that. He's played too long. He's the second leading tackler on the team. He, he's played a lot of football in his career. They need him. He can't afford to do things After like that. After further review, the targeting is confirmed. Number two has been disqualified. Wow. So Tamarcio Reese and now R.J. Murray have been ejected. And you see Tyson Summers going off on... Our referee, Ted Pitts. I'm not sure why. I mean, I, I know he, he wants to show fire to his team and have that back, and, and that's probably the reason. But I think when he calms down and watches the film and sees exactly what happened, he'll realize that really R.J. Murray put his team in a bad position. Well, the point is well made by you. There's no need for any contact. It's not the NFL. Guy can't get up and run. He's rolling around. He's down already. Yeah, it's just a selfish play. He wants to make a hit and be physical, but you're really you're putting your team in a bad spot because they need you on the field. First and goal to go for the Aggies. They try to retake the lead here. Jump ball. Jaleel Scott, the intended target, got locked up with lip trot. No, that was Builder instead. Kendall Vildor in the coverage, and it's going to be second down. A lot of contact, a lot of hand fighting in those 50-50 balls. Just a fade in the back of the end zone, and they're not completed with high propensity just because it's a tough throw without a lot of room, and the defender, the extra defender is all that white sideline. Second down. <laughs> Rodgers looking to one side and now the next. He's in trouble! Gets rid of it and throws it up for grabs incomplete. Dangerous throw. Very dangerous. He's lucky that ball was able to get out of bounds. Huntley came back and was trying to make the grab and bail him out there. Now it's going to be third down. And this is what you call initially a really good job of coverage. But then watch the jailbreak. I mean, you got everybody coming. He's running out of it for his life. And he was not out of the pocket. So he had to find a receiver to throw it in that direction. And then again, they are fortunate that that ball wasn't going the other way. Deshaun Cooper. The fourth-year junior defensive end brought the pressure off the edge, and now it's going to be third down and goal with 4.52 to play here in the second quarter. Coach Costantini really railed on a 
his uh, defensive line and their ability to rush the pass. I've been very impressed with the amount of guys they've been able to rotate in and get after Mr. Rogers. And a timeout called by the Eagles on third down and goal. So Georgia Southern has come up with two big plays defensively after that second targeting call led to the ejection of R.J. Murray and kind of trying to come up with a third one right here calling a timeout. Done a really good job, though, as you just pointed out a few moments ago. Been able to put a lot of pressure on Tyler Rogers. We'll take a timeout as the Eagles take a timeout to talk things over here. Big play coming up when we get back. Beautiful October night here in Statesboro, Georgia. Eagles leading New Mexico State 17-14. Third and goal coming up for the Aggies from the five-yard line. This is just the second Saturday home game for the Eagles in the last 392 days. <laughs> That's crazy, right? I mean, Coach Tyson Summers talked about this is the start of some normalcy back in uh, this program in terms of being able to play on Saturdays, get a couple home games, have normal schedules between games. The hurricane season really got in the way of how they were doing things, and it's taking its toll. But right now, they're home, they're feeling good, they're playing well, and it's homecoming, baby. Big third down right here from the five-yard line. Again, pressure coming. Might have been a hold right there. Ball up for grabs. It's caught by Jaleel Scott in the end zone for the touchdown. What a route. What a route by Scott. I thought they could have called a hold there on the edge. Looked like they got a piece of the defender as he was about to beat him. Watch this. Oh, yeah. That's a little hold. No question about it. <laughs> Didn't drop the flag, though. The Aggies get a break as Scott catches the touchdown. And New Mexico State goes back on top, 20-17. to 17. Dylan Brown will try to give him a four-point lead, and he does. So a five-yard touchdown pass makes it 21-17. Great job by Scott faking the inside and running a beautiful corner route. He was cleared out by the other receiver, kept his feet in bounds, did not panic with the ball in the air, slowed down, caught the ball, got his feet down, great execution. It's just another beautiful ball by Rodgers. And Scott, his Sun Belt leading sixth touchdown reception of the game. He came into the game tied for 12th in the nation in touchdown catches. He's number two in the conference, averaging 90 yards catching per game, number three in the conference, averaging just under six catches per game. Did not play last week or did not play much last week because of a hit pointer. They really missed him, but his 6'6", 215, real big factor for this team, especially in red zone play. No question. He's a red zone threat coming off the bus. And again, the guy averages 15 and a half per catch and 174 receiving yards against Arkansas. They lined him up in the slot. And he crossed the receivers. No need for a pick there. He just ran a beautiful route, stemmed him to the inside, broke out. And again, ball put where it needed to be so he didn't run out of real estate. You see a lot of times quarterbacks throw that ball too far out and then the defender becomes the sidelines. Not in that case. Rodgers continues to impress. Again, short kick. It's going to be taken at the 30-yard line. To the outside, room to run. Across the 50, across the 30, he might go. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Dexter Clark, they tried to kick it short. Dexter Clark, one of the blocking backs up front, took it 70 yards. Oh my. You go pooch punt or pooch kick for this very reason. Usually the upbacks are not interested in breaking the ball outside, but we've got greedy football players and wearing blue, and I love it. He says, I'm not running where all the guys are. I'm taking it where the open grass is. Dexter Carter out of nearby Jacksonville with the 70-yard kickoff return for touchdown, and the Eagles are back up by three. Wow, you talk about backfiring. So you're thought process is this. Let's don't kick it to Campbell because he's been killing us. We'll kick it to one of the blocking backs up front at the 30-yard line. 
and Dexter Carter blows it up in their face with a 70-yard kickoff return for touchdown. The issue thing is, I don't think it was really Campbell that was creating the problems. It was the inability for the kicker to get the ball to the end zone. So I don't think that it was just Campbell's unbelievable speed and quickness that was is creating the situation. So I don't think a, a, a pooch kick was really wanted. <laughs> And obviously, when you kick the ball, sky ball like that, you're asking for hang time. You're asking for coverage. Right there, the coverage got out of their lanes. You need a contained guy on the outside. The coverage converged, lost lane integrity. And Dexter Carter said, thank you very, very much. I believe that's the first time that Dexter Carter has touched the ball the entire season. <laughs> well, his and average is good, right? I mean... <laughs> 70 yards that. per kick return. And a touchdown and per a touch. And a touchdown. <laughs> wow, how about that? Dexter Carter, unlikely hero here for Georgia Southern to give them the lead right back at 24-21. And New Mexico State with some serious special teams issues to try to iron out. Yeah, I love this Sun Belt, huh? Again, a great kick. You see the difference in the kickoffs. Dylan Brown and his inability to get it into the end zone for the touchback and Tyler Bass with his consistent ability to force the touchback. That's right, and you can't blame Dylan Brown on that one, though. I mean, that was just a sky ball gone wrong because oh, the no coverage doubt. let him down. No doubt. I mean, that that there's no no excuse for that. Yeah, you cannot allow the coverage team to lose lane integrity like that. They stay in lanes and work on that for a reason. The field has to be defended. You can't converge and bunch up because if you do and you got somebody with some quickness and some vision, like Dexter Carter obviously has, he's going to make you pay. And now, if you're the Eagles, you got to figure out how to get Dexter Carter the ball all the time. <laughs> Rodgers, time, trying to get it all back, going for Scott. Contact, catch is made. Scott was being held down the sideline. He still made the grab. Boy, this Scott is something else now. Like you said, he's 6'6", 215 in a red zone threat, but he's good in the open field as well. Uh, I'm not sure what the Georgia Southern fans are upset about, except that the Eagles are their team. He was clearly being held down the sideline by Vildor. There's a lot of contact on both sides, Matt. And, I mean, I, I think that Sumner, Summers is talking about the both guys have the ability to, to fight for that ball, and you're going to see Jaleel Scott has his hands all over the DB as well. I mean, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I you know, I don't know there. I, you know, I, I, that looks like a play-on situation there, or maybe offense. I, you see the DB fall backwards. The little Scott, who we saw earlier, push off at the top of a route. He likes to get handsy in his routes. He's a very physical football player, and we love that. But that, that's a tough call for the defense. So the ball's at the 40 after the penalty. It was not ruled a catch. They take the penalty here at the 40-yard line because he was out of bounds. Rodgers fires to the outside and quickly slung to the ground by Brenchin. O.J. Clark with the catch. Just a two-yard game on Quavian Brenchin, who had the interception slash fumble recovery to set up the Eagles' field goal earlier in this quarter, making the tackle right there. Tyler Rodgers again under pressure, makes a nice throw with a man in his face, and on Quavian Brenchin, Blows it up just for a short game. Second down and seven, four minutes to play in the half. Up top, far sideline, man open and incomplete. Could not bring it in. That was Connor Kramer, the intended target, a former quarterback here for the Aggies. They moved a wide receiver back in the spring. That time the offensive line picked up the stun up front and gave a beautiful pocket to Rodgers, and usually he'll make you pay. Just a little bit out of the reach of Connor Kramer, but it's clear to me that Doug Martin has decided to abandon the run altogether and feels like he can he can win this football by throwing it every play. Again, no Larry Rose tonight. He's the number four rusher in the conference at a 1,600-yard rushing season two years ago as a sophomore. Heavy rush. De La Rosa came unabated. Passes complete to Muse. Muse makes a couple men miss and then sprints forward down to the 28-yard line. Zoe Poor Costantini. tackling there by the Eagles. Excuse me, Max. Zoe Costantini decided to, blow, to drive up the blitz, and I don't know why you would draw up a blitz because the front floor is doing it by themselves, and when they've blitzed, you've seen open receivers running, and that's a problem for that secondary. 
great job, like you said, of open field running, but I would stay away from the blitz and allow my front four to get after Rodgers. First and 10 from the 29-yard line. Rodgers going across. Incomplete. Muse, who just made the last catch, was the intended target at that time. And you saw on that catch by Muse, you saw number 22, Joshua Moon, in the defensive backfield for the Eagles. He's one of their best defensive backs, but it clearly looks like he's not 100% because he got faked out badly on that play. Doesn't, didn't seem like he had a lot of mobility. mobility. Well, and if he did, he, he didn't look like he did on that play because Muse made him pay. The Joshua Moon, the junior out of Fairburn, and Constantini told us this was a big deal to be getting Moon back this week. He got hurt in that Auburn game, and he has not been really 100% the entire season. Rodgers, heavy rush, steps up. He's in trouble, gets away with it. Throws on the run, back across, looking in the middle for Huntley, incomplete. Ever want to throw back across your body into the middle of the field, so they're lucky that that didn't work. But Tyler Rodgers is not a scrambling quarterback, but what he does, he slides in the pocket. Look at the pocket oh. presence. That's beautiful right there. His eyes remain downfield. I don't need a runner. I need a guy who can work the pocket, extend the play, and find the open man. Really, again, continue to be impressed by Rodgers. I knew he was really good just watching him on tape, but in person, he's been excellent. Over 8,500 yards passing for Rodgers. He's the number two all-time passer in Aggies history. Will the Eagles bleed the bliss on third down again? Third down and timeout called by Georgia Southern once again. They burn a timeout defensively, facing a big third down conversion by the Aggies offense. Stops the clock with three minutes and five seconds to play here in the first half. Stick around. Coming up at halftime, we're going to talk to college football Hall of Fame inductee Adrian Peterson. He's going to join us for halftime. We'll talk to him. They had a ceremony here between the end of the first and second quarter. The all-time leading rusher in Division I history, Adrian Peterson, with over 6,500 yards in his career. Let's take a look at the Sunbelt scoreboard. Games going on around the conference right now. Idaho jumped out to a 20 to nothing lead in that game. App State has come back to make it a touchdown game. That's in the fourth quarter out west. Arkansas State leading Coastal 7-0 in the first. Georgia State leading ULM 40-24. Of course, South Alabama beat Troy on Thursday night in a, a big, big upset. Yeah. Not bling and blitz here. I would play coverage. Rodgers, time. Now going to run it. Slips out of a tackle, and Rodgers down to the 19-yard line. Close to a first down. Again, Eagles got a shot at the quarterback in the open field and couldn't get him on the ground. Well, Rodgers is trying to make a liar out of me. I said he's not a runner, but he sure looks like one right now. Great coverage downfield. I think bringing four was the right call, but you got to make the tackle. This guy wasn't looking to go down. He's trying to make the first down. Fourth and less than a yard, and the Aggies are going to go for it. De La Rosa comes right up the middle. They pick it up. Rodgers going to go to the end zone on fourth and one. Man wide open. He can't catch it. Connor Kramer had a touchdown in his mitts and could not haul it in. And the ball goes over on down. Eagles decide to blitz. And as it's been happening all day, man coverage is not working for him. Connor Kramer has struggled tonight. He's had a tough night because he's been he's been open, has some opportunities to score touchdowns, and just haven't been able to come up with the football. What do you think about the call on fourth and less than a yard to go for the six? I love it because this is who you are. You're be the best player on your football team is Tyler Rogers right now because Rose is out. The second best player is your receiver. Now, they went away from J Jaleel Scott, but he still hit the right man. It just couldn't connect on it. What I like, though, is the attacking of the blitz. They know the Eagles are blitzing. Let's attack it by going downfield. Eagles back on offense. Met right at the line of scrimmage. No running room right there. You see the strip attempt by the Aggies on defense as Fields gets stonewalled the line. Of course, Fields had a close to 50-yard touchdown run earlier in this half. Brings up second down and 10. And the clock will tick under two minutes before the Eagles snap it again. Really surprised the Eagles aren't even going slower than this. They don't want to give the ball back to this high-powered offense. Go, Rose! 
tries to get to the outside, and LaForce makes the tackle at the 27-yard line. Pick up of close to seven on that play, even more than that. Going to spot it at the 28, brings up a third down and two. Great vision, puts his foot in the ground, bounces the ball to the outside. Ball security is an issue for every running back. He did a good job there keeping that ball in his hands. Third down and short, bad snap, it's bobbled, and Fields has to get on top of it. And that's going to bring up fourth down. I said bad snap. I don't know if it was a bad snap. Works just didn't hold on to it. And now it's going to be fourth down, and the Aggies will call a timeout here to try to get the ball back with some time on the clock. As they should. That's great coaching. Let's see what happened right here. Just mentioned ball security. Uh, he just bobbled a snap. It was good enough. He should have held on to that thing. Really just looked like he was trying to run the play before he had the ball. Yeah, when you play freshman players, you're going to get some great plays and you get some bad plays. That's what happens playing young players. Brian Cook said that to run this offense properly, a quarterback needs a ton of reps, live reps. As a backup player in spring and in summer, summer camp, as a backup during the games, and this is a... You know, this is something that Cy Wars has not been able to enjoy, the ability to be an apprenticeship situation. He has, he's learning on the job, he's, he's learning on the fly, and he's going to make his ton of mistakes. Again, though, if you can just get through this year with some teachable moments and some big wins, the future, though, the future of this guy is he goes a sophomore and then a junior and senior, I think he's going to be a dynamite quarterback in his offense. Update from Moscow, Idaho. App State has come all the way back. A 45-yard touchdown pass from Taylor Lamb to Ike Lewis has tied the game at 20 with 10 minutes to play. Mexico State's going to get this ball back with just under a minute 20, and that's plenty of time for this offense. Wright calls fair catch and makes it with a man in his face. Wesley Kennedy right there on the punt coverage. And so the Aggies have it at the 41, 59 yards away from a touchdown, and certainly closer than that for field goal range with 1.14 to play in the half. We've seen a ton of blitzes from Georgia Southern. I think at this point, you stay away from that. Right, these receivers are running away from your defensive backs when it's man coverage. I play cover two or quarters defense and just drop back these secondary men keep the ball in front of you. So Aggies back on offense, down three. Rodgers fires across. That's Jalil Scott. Long strides, gets to the 45. Upended by Freeman at the 45-yard line. That'll stop the clock, however, to move the chain. Great job again by running a crisp route. Catches the ball with his hands. You see that? No body catching from this kid. He is catching the ball with his hands. He's long, eating up garbage yards after the catch. You got to love it. Clark in motion behind the line. Again, the Aggies playing without Larry Rose tonight. Rodgers fires to the far side, and Scott cannot come up with it this time. Brinson on the coverage, and it's going to be second down. I think Brinson might have got away with a hold at the top of that route. I saw the receiver's body jerk back in an unnatural way. See if we can pick it up from the replay, but they don't throw the flag. It's great coverage. You might have saw. See that flapping jersey there? That was a little yeah. bit of a tuck here. You don't, you don't see at the top of Wilds receivers shoulders pull back unnaturally like that. I knew something was going on, but referees missed it. Play on. Second down. Rodgers, time, fires. That's Scott again. And Scott tackled at the 40-yard line. De La Rosa, the linebacker, timeout called by the Aggies. Stops the clock with 37 seconds, brings up third down. It's exactly what a conservative zone coverage is supposed to do. The ball will be caught in front of you, but you come up and you put a hurting on the receiver, and he'll remember that for the rest of the game. He'll start looking across the middle when that ball is coming from now on because he knows there's a guy lurking. His name is Chris De La Rosa. Well, Jaleel Scott, we did not see them able to go that way with him in the first quarter, but he's got four catches for 40 yards and a touchdown here in the second quarter, and it looks like they're starting to get him back in the mix offensively. Third and short, where Zoe Costantini resists the urge to bring pressure, because if he does, he is literally outmatched in the secondary. With yeah. all the injuries and the issues they have and guys missing, I just think bringing pressure here would be a mistake. Let's see what happens. Third down and four. 
37 seconds to play in the half. Aggies probably need at least another 15 yards to be field goal range. Heavy rush. Rodgers throws. Ball up for grabs. Jaleel Scott, did he come up with it? And they're going to rule a catch for Scott inside the 15-yard line. What a catch by Jaleel Scott stopping the clock with 30 seconds. Scott is one of the more physical receivers I've seen all year. He's getting held. He doesn't care. Look at him attack the football with his hands. I mean, that's Defense. beautiful. Offside. That penalty's declined. The catch is good. It'll be first down. There was also an offsides call on the Eagles, which the Aggies have declined. They still haven't set the chains yet. And now the officials blow the whistle so they can set the chains. Now let's give a nod to this Aggie offensive line, though. They've held up. They continue to run stunts up front, bring bling britzes every now and then, but they're rushing four lately, and they're getting blocked. Watch Scott. I mean, you're seeing right now why Scott is one of the best wide receivers, not just in the Sun Belt, but possibly in the nation. He's had his biggest games against the biggest opponents. He had a nine-catch, 174-yard game in a touchdown against Arkansas and he had an eight catch 149 game and two touchdowns against Arizona State this catch is under review that's just a thing of beauty and that ball might have rolled out boy but I don't see any evidence on our replay to overturn the call of catch that was made on the field that's right might isn't good enough right it has to be conclusive it has to be undisputed undeniable because the call in the field was a catch What I like is just the way he went up for that ball. Higher than everybody else. When you're 6'6", that's going to happen. Tyree yep. on his helmet. Uh, oh, there, now that there, one. that <laughs> that might be the one that does it right yeah. there on the super slow-mo. Yeah. Looks like that ball might have been out and on the ground. So if Bill Merritt, our replay official, is seeing what we just saw right there, they might bring this one back. Job by our cameraman here. That was a great look at it. I'll tell you what, Bill Merritt's going to regret coming in here and talking because that was the kiss of death. And we joked about 20, re he's going to have 20 replays in the first half. Another look at it right there. You can't really tell on this one, but the other field level shot from the Georgia Southern sideline. Gave you a really good look at it. And I think that ball, this is the one right here. Now look and see. Do you think that ball ends up coming out of his hands and on the ground? After further review, the pass is incomplete. Yeah, right there. And that's why it was really incomplete sides, because of that number replay 93, right there. So the ball's going to come accepted. way back. That five yards and that's going to dramatically change things down. for the Aggies because they have no timeouts remaining. And the ball is going to be spotted back at the 39-yard line. Now, that also changes the situation. The Eagles were off sides on that play, and the Aggies should get the five-yard mark off there, and they will. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention how Monquavion Brinson fought for that ball. He went up and made that a really tough catch, and you got to give him credit for breaking up the pass, really. I mean, he fought all the way through, which is exactly what they teach DBs to do. Finish the play because that ball can come out, spread out at the end, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I think Brinson's played very well here tonight. Rogers throwing on the run. That's complete to Hogan. Hogan didn't get out of bounds. Why didn't he get out of bounds? Yeah, it's a minimal mistake there. He was right next to the sideline. He's going to get the ball out of bounds. Yeah, step backwards, young man. And instead, they burned a lot of time here getting to the line. They're going to end up wasting about seven or eight seconds right there because Hogan didn't just step backwards when he made the catch. And he got to burn it down by throwing the ball into the ground. That's just a mental error, situational football. It, it gets practiced every single week towards the end of the week. Two-minute offense. I mean, my goodness. I mean, he was literally on the sideline. All he had to do was step backwards, and they would have had time to run another play. As it is, they're going to bring the field goal unit out now. Just think of how explosive this offense. One play is all it takes. You're right there. Just step out. When you got guys like Jaleel Scott and Tyler Rogers hooking up all night. One play is all you need, especially from this position in the field. So that's a big play. 44 yard attempt is on its way off the foot of Dylan Brown. It hits the upright. <laughs> 
And the Aggies come up empty again. So back-to-back -back possessions for New Mexico State. In scoring territory, they come up empty. And the nightmare night for Dylan Brown continues. I mean, that is the torture chamber for a kicker. Add that to the short kicks. The kickoff return for a touchdown on a pooch kick. This is just as bad as it gets special teams-wise for the Aggies. Yeah, it has been a bad half for New Mexico State on special teams. And now the Eagles will take a safety formation here and just take a knee and get to the locker room. And Georgia Southern will go to the locker room and we've with a 24-21 lead. Score, your Georgia Southern Eagles. And now a little pushing and shoving for the two teams. And the officials say, guys, get on to the locker room and take a breath. <laughs> Drink some water. Relax a little bit. We're at halftime. Wow, what a first half. 45 combined points in the first half. Over 400 yards of offense for the two teams combined. A big special teams kickoff return touchdown by Dexter Carter, an unlikely hero for Georgia Southern. And that is why we're... 24-21 Eagles heading to the locker room, and that's the Dexter Carter 70-yard return for a touchdown. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk to Adrian Peterson. Don't go away. More to come here from Statesboro in just a moment. Welcome to the Capital One Halftime Report. It's halftime in Statesboro, Georgia, and time now to take a look at this play that may impact your Capital One fan vote. Harris brings it all the way home. Oh, so easy for Jalen Hurts. Here's Rocks. Touchdown time. A sprint to the goal line. All the way. Touchdown. And don't forget to go to ESPN.com or the Sports Center Facebook page on Tuesday to give your Capital One fan vote. The Capital One halftime report will continue from Statesboro, Georgia, in just a moment. Back at halftime here in Statesboro, Georgia Southern with a 24-21 lead on New Mexico State. We're joined here at halftime by College Football Hall of Famer Adrian Peterson, wow. all-time leading rusher in Division I history. Thanks a lot for being with us. They had the ceremony down on the field between the first and second quarter. I just got to ask you, what's it feel like to go into the College Football Hall of Fame? I mean, it's huge. It's a um, great honor. You know, I don't think it, it, has, it has really sunk in yet. You know, I think in December, you know, when well, I'm in New York and um, all the lights and cameras are shining, then I think it'll, it'll, it'll truly touch me. Yeah. You know, AP, Barry Sanders, Herschel Walker, and all these great running backs throughout history, you ran for more yards than any of them. Is there a back that you looked at and was like, wow, I want to pattern my game after him? Of course. Uh, Herschel Walker was one, uh, Walter Payton, and Bo Jackson. And uh, and the thing was that all three of those guys wore number 34. Right. <laughs> and my first year playing, that was my number, was number 34. And I, and I just tried to add something from their game into my game. And uh, that's what I tell kids to do is watch the game of football. Don't just watch, but watch the game of football. And, um, you know, and try to pull something from those guys and um, add it in to your game. Absolutely. Stealing from the other guys. That's the way you do it, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is the real Adrian Peterson, not that guy who's now with the Cardinals. <laughs> he was doing it long before he was doing it. Now, there's one play in particular that all Georgia Southern fans remember and love. It's the, probably the greatest play in Georgia Southern history. But not just Georgia Southern fans. This is called The Run. It came against Youngstown State in the national championship game. Watch our man. Watch this. Tell us what's going through Ooh. your mind right here. Grabbing the ball and, um, you know. Watch this one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Get off me! Amazing. That was a good one. <laughs> that, that was, was pretty good. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. You're too man. humble, man. <laughs> 
Let me ask you a question. You see the game evolving away from running the football as much as they did back in our day. What do you think about still being able to challenge football teams up front the way this program does? Everybody's getting to the spread. They want to throw the football out of the spread. Talk about how important it is to run the football and get balanced in the offense. I think I think it starts out running the football. And, um, and you know, it, it just shows the aggression. And, um, you know, they're taking some things out of football, but um, football is an aggressive sport. And the ones who can, can control the line of scrimmage are um, typically, you know, the ones who do, who do well. And I really think the, the teams that throw the football as much as a lot of these guys do, they, they become a softer football team. So when they have to play against the Georgia Southerns or the Georgia Techs of the world, they really struggle controlling the line of scrimmage just because they don't practice against it a lot. Of course. And, uh, and you know, here at Georgia Southern, when I was here, we would go about 15 minutes um, full of contact and uh, and quarterbacks and all. And it was great because for our offense, you have to get hit right. and practice in order to run it on Saturdays. Because if you go all week not getting hit, and then on, on Saturday you come and get hit, you're gonna, it's a different element. No question. Well, I encourage you to Google his stats. They're really <laughs> unbelievable. I can't give them all right here. But one of the most impressive, I think, is what was 48 consecutive games of 100-yard rushing. 100 yards rushing in 48 consecutive games. What do you remember most about your career here at Georgia Southern? Um, it's winning. It's winning. It's winning. And um, I was very fortunate enough, man, to have a, a, a tremendous offense, um, tremendous defense, and um, special, team, special teams as well. And um, winning. You know, when we came on, on Saturdays, you know, there was no doubt in our mind that we was going to win. And um, most of the time we did. How humble is this guy? Yeah, he's going to he, college hall of fame, and what's important to him is about winning. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the type of football players that coaches want, and the type of teammates you want as a player. One of the things that made him great, he's one of the holy trinity of Georgia Southern football: Irk Russell, Adrian Peterson, and Tracy Ham. Thanks a lot for being with us. Congratulations on going into the Thank college God, football Absolutely, hall man. of fame. It, man. Sure. It's halftime here in Statesboro. The Eagles looking for their first win of the season. They lead New Mexico State 24-21. Welcome back to the Capital One Halftime Report. Halftime here in Statesboro 24-21. Georgia Southern with the lead on New Mexico State. Let's take a look at those first half highlights. Wild first half. Actually, New Mexico State was able to jump on top first. They really were. They ran the football early in the game, and they were able to be successful with a, with a balanced attack. And then the touchdown run by L.A. Ramsby made it. 7-7, big touchdown pass from Rodgers to Hogan made it 14-7. They really responded well early on, but eventually the problem became the kicking game. I mean, they're dominating in terms of the, the total yards, but Georgia Southern kept getting the ball at the half field mark and just really taking advantage of it. And you see there just a tremendous run with great blocking. All the backs are playing well. L.A. Ramsby and company. Garrett Fields just balling out. And, Huge, huge first half. But this was really the backbreaker in that first half. A short kick. You mentioned the special teams problems for the Aggies. Tried to kick it short. And Dexter Carter, one of the up backs, took it 70 yards for the score. And that's where we stand. 24-21, second half starting when we get back. Uh, Larry, you got to get those burgers off the grill. Doug Flutie? Who threw the Hail Larry? You mean a Hail Mary? Tomato potato, man. Those are two different words. Let's go, Dr. Pepper here. Let's go. Let's take a look at today's campus moment. It's brought to you by Dr. Pepper on this homecoming night in Statesboro. They had the homecoming festivities. The Eagles fans all excited about that and excited about possibly picking up their first win of the season, a 24-21 lead as they'll be receiving the ball here to start this 
third quarter. Well, will these struggles continue? Exactly. This is the big challenge for the Aggies. They gave up a 70-yard kickoff return touchdown to Dexter Carter the last time they kicked off. Do you pooch kick it? Do you mortar ball it? Or do you try to kick it deep? They try to kick it deep this time. And Miles Campbell has it go through the back of the end zone. Perhaps they should have been trying to do that the entire first half. There you go. Touch that, yes. Let's take a look at the first half statistics. Over 400 yards of offense between these two teams combined in that first half. I think the turnover is an issue there. Uh, plus one for some Georgia Southern. That's They need to win that turnover battle. The penalties have been against Georgia Southern. They've been able to overcome it, and they have been really bad on third down. Nothing new there, and that's something yep. I thought would be an issue. So far, it has not. Well, for the Eagles and Tioka, that one turnover is the difference in the ball game because that turnover turned into three points for Georgia Southern, and that's how much they lead the game by. Sure. Right now. sure. So Ramsby starts the second half with a five-yard carry to the 30-yard line. Ramsby with 10 carries now, 37 yards. Wesley Fields, the leading rusher for the Eagles tonight, 10 carries on 98 yards. Of course, 48 of them came on one carry, the touchdown run at the end of the first quarter. And that seems like a very mundane five yards, but I'm just telling you, five yards on first down for this offense is huge. Demarcus Godfrey now lines up in the backfield. He'll block for Ramsby, and Ramsby gets nothing on that play. Javon Ferguson making the tackle. Ferguson, their leading tackler. That was his 10th tackle of the night right there in his seventh solo. So Ramsey falls forward after getting first first down yards of five yards. He falls forward for a yard here. Now this is third management. Now you can run the bootleg. You can run your regular base offense. It's all available to you just because you're able to get five yards on first down. Third down and four. Ball at the 31. Work's going to throw, and it is complete on the edge to Campbell. Campbell picks up the first down and more. And Campbell's still on his feet and down to the 42-yard line. Miles Campbell with his second catch of the game. Ron LaForce finally gets him on the ground, but Campbell's been a factor here tonight. All-purpose yards. He has been a factor, but I want you to look at the perimeter. OB Fortune. Watch the block. You see that? That's what springs Miles Campbell. If In this offense, if you play wide receiver, you have to be able to block, not just for the running backs, but for your other wide receivers. If you do it for them, they'll do it for you. That's teamwork. Excellent job by Fortune. So first and 10 for the Eagles at the 41. Shovel pass goes to Godfrey. Godfrey right up the middle to Marcus Godfrey down to the 29-yard line. He picks up 12. Jaden Wright makes the tackle. Excellent play call by Brian Cook. They've been running the option to the perimeter all night. This time it's a key breaker. He'll start out to his right to the all outside and then, boom, kick it right inside on a shovel pass like you said. Great execution, great blocking in the inside. First down again. Just the fourth touch of the season for Godfrey. It's a big gainer, however. Ramsby gets it, batters the inside of that interior offensive and defensive line, and he picks up about three on the play down to the 26. Ramsby, the fifth-year senior out of Cincinnati, averaging 4.6 yards per carry for the season coming into tonight. He's less than that tonight, about three yards per carry. They've all been hard yards. He's got a touchdown tonight as well. Brings up second down and seven. Eagles, one of five winless FBS teams left in the nation, trying to get out of that category tonight. And off Ramsby again, and Ramsby, nothing doing. Harrington was the first guy to hit him, slowing down. They pick up only one on the one. Excellent play by Harrington. They had something cooking in the inside until Harrington burst through the gap and made a nice play. Couldn't get him wrapped up, but he certainly made him start over, and that's usually all you need when your defense is pursuing. So now the Eagles get a little bit more speed in the backfield as they bring in Garrett to join Wesley Fields. And off Fields. Nothing doing. Ferguson meets him there. Wilcox as well. And it's going to be fourth down. Ferguson's had himself a big night. I don't know that Ferguson even played at all last week at App State. 
but facing this option offense, they got him playing that Mike linebacker. It's been a wise move by Frank Spaziani. That was an excellent job by the defensive line of stacking that offense. Roy Lopez, we've called his name a couple times, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but on that play, the sophomore from Tempe, Arizona, rose up and really knocked the offense back and had no running room there on the inside. 42-yard attempt for Bass. This one's on its way, and it is good. Tyler Bass with his second field goal of the night, a 32-yarder, and now a 42-yarder. And four minutes into the third quarter, Georgia Southern now has a six-point lead. 27-21, Georgia Southern looking for their first win of the season and their fourth all-time win against the Aggies, the all-time series 3-0. They've all been competitive except for the last one they played here back in 2015 when the Eagles ran them out of the stadium 56-26. And this series, despite the fact this is the last year for New Mexico State in the Sun Belt, will continue as they've signed a home-and-home -home series between the two teams in 2018 and 2019 as well. On that last possession, that was really good red zone defense by this New Mexico State Aggie defense. And so they're in good position now because the offense has been humming. And Bass again nails it deep, a good eight, nine yards deep in the end zone. And he has been a big weapon for Georgia Southern tonight on kickoffs and also booting two field goals. And he's changed the scoreboard, exactly. So... You know, the, the drive start average is 45 for Georgia Southern, 25 for New Mexico State. That is great for Georgia Southern. It doesn't really kill New Mexico State because it's so high power. They throw the football so well. They move the ball so well. But for Georgia Southern, they cannot afford to flip that field the other way. If they were starting inside their 20 or 35-yard line, it'd be an issue for them. They wouldn't have as many points as they do now. Ball starts at the 25. Rodgers goes right to the air, throws to the sideline. That's complete to Hogan. He gets dragged out of bounds by Bird at the 33-yard line. Are you surprised that New Mexico State, even though Rose is out, we know he's their top running back, they basically abandoned the run. They've run the ball only eight times the entire night. It is it's surprising to me because I think it can, it can keep a defense honest. You can catch them with a draw. You can catch them just trying to get too little in the box and really spread out to try to stop the pass. They hand it off right there to Huntley. He tries to get to the edge and does across the 40. And Huntley out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Yeah. So they go to the run, and it works. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Right now, you know, Georgia Southern has changed their defensive philosophy. They're, they're base now nickel. And this is not enough guys in the box. And Huntley can just outrun the box anyway. So you got, every now and then, you like give them a run to keep them on. Just give them something else to think about. And it'll slow that rush down who's been all over your quarterback all day. Raymond Johnson being helped off the field. That's bad news. Raymond Johnson, yeah. the freshman out of Sumter, South Carolina, has had himself a nice game here tonight. Yeah, he's been balling. I mean, that's unfortunate to see him limp off. It's good that he's doing it under his own power, but that's a bad look for Georgia Southern because they need him. He's been in the face of Tyler Rogers all day. If his pass rush slows down as this game wears down, that's a bad, bad situation also for Georgia Southern because Tyler Rogers in the pocket will kill you. Johnson officially tonight with a quarterback sack and two quarterback hurries. It's first and 10, ball at the 43. They bring in Gleam to replace him on the right defensive end spot. Rogers going to fire to the sideline, complete to Huntley. He's not going to be able to get around Baker, who drops him or gets him out of bounds, I should say, for a loss of a yard. Daryl Baker is one of the guys that Zoe Costantini told us would get a lot of run. And he's making the most of it. Look at him eat up ground. And that's some speed right there. That's closing speed by DB. Comes in with the right leverage, uses the sidelines as an excellent defender. Great job. Just a freshman, right? Sure, freshman too, Baker. 36 passes, just nine rushes for the Aggies tonight. Ball is dropped across the middle to Hogan. Gets out of Brinson's tackle and down to the 49-yard line. So he picks up an extra five yards on the play after Brinson fails to get him on the ground. Brinson has had a nice night. He's just got to finish the play here. That's great man coverage there. He's right in the hip of the receiver. Now finish and get him on the ground. You got to finish that play, and that's a great job of continuing to fight forward by the receiver, Greg Hogan. Aggies are 5 of 8 on third downs tonight. This is a third down and four from their own 49. Huntley's out there. If Rodgers goes that way, instead looks across the middle and fires incomplete. 
was looking for Muse. That was Baker on the coverage, and it's fourth down. I think Baker got away with one there. There was some contact just before the ball arrived, and the officials didn't throw the flag, so I saw it, though. There's a little contact there. Yeah, riding him on the back a yeah. little bit. Yeah. And it's fourth down. Aggies got a punt here. They're down six. And you see, this is what happens now. When you fall behind Georgia Southern, you set them up to get into a long situation where they eat up about seven or eight minutes of the clock with that ground game of theirs. Yeah, this is who they are. They want to shorten the game, possess the football, keep it from you, and change the scoreboard on every possession. Campbell watches it hit at the 16-yard line, and it takes a Eagles bounce back upfield. Let's see. They're going to spot it at the 17, so not much damage for the Aggies right there. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Eagles at the 17 when we get back. Georgia Southern leading New Mexico State 27-21 on a night where they're paying tribute to Coach Eric Russell and Adrian Peterson, who we talked to at halftime. The Eagles script on the side of the helmet here. They're calling these the, the, the Eric Russell classic uniforms. So you take a look at the pants, the blue stripes down the side of the pants represent Coach Russell's three national championships and beautiful Eagle Creek. And then the gold stripe overall represents, and there's a gold stripe in there, trust me. Uh, <laughs> at least they told us there was. Represents the six overall national titles for this Eagles team. Works on the carry, going to be dropped right away at the 16-yard line. Might have lost a yard on the play. Tried to go quarterback draw, and that's fooling nobody because you're not a passing team. So... You know, Deshante Lloyd wasn't buying any kind of, of pass look from the offensive line. He just went in and made the play. Negative yards. Yeah, they know the Eagles are going to run, and the Eagles know the Aggies are going to pass. It's pretty much been one-dimensional for these two offenses tonight. Expected by the Eagles, maybe not so much for the Aggies. Again, the Eagles try to run the ball, and no success against this Aggies defense right there. That was Monteo Garrett on the carry his fourth of the night. And if, this is, if you're an Aggies fan, this is exactly what you're looking for. When you don't give up any real yards on first down, get a short gain on second down, this is terrible situation for the Eagles offense. You are now in control if you're the Aggie defense. Just play one more play aggressively, make the tackle, generally it's going to be in space, and you better get off the field. Eagles are two of eight on third downs tonight. Works rolling to his right, running, now going to run it up to the 20, 25. And he's at the 28-yard line. He picks up the first down. Can't let him out of the pocket. The Eagles crowd here, you could hear several of them calling for a targeting. But what happened was he slid down. It was, But he was sliding down, and the defender was coming in to make the tackle and kind of met him in his slide down. Yeah, see? Yeah, nothing That's there. not a targeting. Not I mean, the guy brushed him with his arm, but it was – on a cutback and a slide. That's right. And if you're the defense, you can't let Shy Works get out of the pocket. That's the only way he can beat you. Keep him in the pocket, make him read the defense, and deliver the ball. Third, third down conversion for the Eagles tonight. Fields instead. Monteo Garrett ends up with it. Fooled me on the play. He gets up to the 37-yard line. He's close to a first down. We talked about option offense being assignment football for the defense. And right there, they got outnumbered. There was nobody for the pitch. There's got to be a guy for the dive, a guy for the quarterback, and a guy for a pitch. And watch the pitch get forced, but then there's no – or I should say, yeah, the quarterback gets forced in the pitch, but there's nobody on the pitch, man. Hard running right there for Wesley Fields. Terrell Hanks gets him on the ground, and he stands up and points first down as Fields goes over 100 yards rushing for the night. They considered Fields kind of a cross between Matt – Frida, who's now with the San Francisco 49ers and his partner right now, L.A. Ramsby. Quite frankly, it's been a disappointing season for Fields until tonight, averaging just over three yards per carry. But he's had a good night tonight. I think these are good backs. The offensive line has struggled coming into the, into the game. And tonight, though, they've been stellar, and therefore the backs have been stellar. And off Godfrey met by Lopez. No way. Godfrey got one. Ray Lopez, probably their best defensive lineman. And again, the Aggies have had to play a man down on that defensive line today. Stody Bradley, their starting left in, did not play tonight or has not played tonight because of a shoulder injury. Offensively, they've been without 
Larry Rose. He did practice lightly this week. Banged his knee last week against App State. I guess got out there in pregame warm-ups. Just couldn't go. Yeah, I, and I'm seeing something from Lopez. He's a good football player. Just a sophomore. Wurtz wants to throw. Instead, he's going to run. And Lopez gets on top of him again at the 47-yard line. Brings up another that third down and long. Keeper. Again, the crowd's looking for some sort of call, but no, he's a runner now. He's not in that protective class. Once you break the pocket, then you start running. Now, when I say break the pocket, he broke it from the inside. See how he kept him inside the pocket this time? It's a totally different ball game for these little quarterbacks who want to run around. Get outside the pocket, they're dangerous. They kill you on the outside. Keep them inside the pocket, make up a run up inside. They don't really want to see linebackers waiting for them. Lopez moves pretty good for his 6'2", 3'10", self, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And I'm thinking he's a little more than 3'10", too. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, the preseason weight. Right. <laughs> Third down here. Works in a pocket, now running, and going to go down at the 50-yard line. Ferguson came up from deep to make the tackle, and now it's going to be fourth down. And Georgia Southern's going to punt here. But what they were able to do with this drive is flip the field. See, I, I would never play man coverage against these guys in passing situations. I play zone so that everybody has eyes on the quarterback looking to see where he goes. He really struggles if you make him have to read the defense. He just hasn't had enough plays. I didn't have enough snaps to try to do that. So if you see, he's always trying to see one guy. If that guy's covered, he's taking off. I tell you, another place where the Aggies have missed Larry Rose tonight has been in the punt return game. He had a 37-yard punt return last week at App State. Not having him back there, you lose a measure of explosiveness. The ball hits inside the 10, and they can't keep it from going into the end zone. So it'll come out to the 20, and that's where the Aggies will have it with 3.40 to play here in the third quarter. And we'll take a timeout, take a breath. We got a pretty... Wild fourth quarter coming up, I'm guessing. <laughs> Three forty to play here in the third quarter. Georgia Southern leading New Mexico State 27-21. Matt Stewart along with Tyoka Jackson. Thanks for joining us here on Statesboro. You take a look at Tyler Rogers. 261 yards, all of that in the air. A couple of touchdowns and one interception that turned out to be critical. That turned into three points for the Eagles in the second quarter. Rodgers going back to the air. Heavy rush. He'll take a sack back at the 14-yard line. Vleem and Cooper got to him. Trevor Vleem and Deshaun Cooper dropping for a loss of six yards back at the 14-yard line. Vleem came in for the injured. Raymond Johnson, and he's going to step up and make a play and say, yeah, I'm, I'm maybe a backup on the 2D, but when I get in the game, I play like a starter. Great outside rush, turned the corner, dipped his outside, or inside shoulder, I should say, and leaned off and made that play. Great rush there. Man, Tioka knows something about defensive end technique. Played 12 years in the National Football League. Pass is thrown complete at the 26-yard line. O.J. Clark making the stop, uh, making the catch, and the stop made by De La Rosa. It's really simple what's happening here. When the offensive line gives Tyler Rogers time, he's finding open receivers. Now, they're not always catching it, and they may fumble, but they're open guys running through the secondary of Georgia Southern. When Georgia Southern gets a rush, it's all good for them. They put pressure on. It's either incomplete or a sack. 22 completions for Rodgers. He averages 30 a game, which is number three in the nation. Rodgers goes to the air again, and it's going to be caught by Muse. Got his feet down at the 41-yard line and a first down for the Aggies. Again, a blitz, and it has been that way all night. When Georgia Southern has decided to bring people, it's been an issue for them, and it's usually a first down for the offense. I would not blitz again, and if I did, it would definitely be zone blitz. It would not be a man blitz. This is just really too easy for Tyler Rogers. When they blitz, it's defined for him. He gets the ball out of his hands, and it's always accurate. They dump it off here for Huntley. Huntley's got some blockers, but it caves in on him pretty quick with Baker making the tackle at the 42-yard line. He picked up only one on the play. Yeah, I saw Bryce Roberts, number 87, the tight end, trying to get to the perimeter and make a block, but just too athletic on the outside for these defenders. They ran around him, got underneath, and made the play before he could get there. And Roberts, the tight end, 6'4", 270 freshman, jogs off the field at second down. Pocket for Rodgers, fires, complete first down and more for Huntley. And Huntley tries to slam on the brakes and make a cut and slides out of bounds at the 33-yard line. 
Huntley starting to make his presence felt. That's his 10th catch of the game. What a beautiful option route. Watch him run an option route on Rashad Bird. And Bird has no chains. Option route, he can go in or out. Bird's shading the inside. He just breaks outside, and, and Bird can't stay with him. The guy's just too athletic for him. That matchup is a problem. It has been all night. They want that running back on the linebacker all night long. All night long because it's a mismatch. It's Eminem or baby, just like Dick Vitale used to say. Huntley right up the middle. Huntley down to the 24-yard line in this drive featuring Jason Huntley, the sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. This kid drafted out of, uh, <laughs> recruited out of Martin High School. Wide receiver who moved to running back his senior year. So he's even run, you know that. He can catch the football too. He's very comfortable running outside plays and catching the football in the backfield. Second down and one. Can you see that running play though, partner? Excuse me for yeah. interrupting, but that running play right there will slow this pass rush down. They pick up the blitz. Good job by Hogan there. They throw it underneath. And that is Hogan with the catch. That was Huntley who picked up the blitz. Pardon me. But why, I, let's go back and watch that because we've been talking about Huntley in the pass game and the run game. He just made a huge play picking up the blitz off the edge there. And he's only 5'9", 175 pounds, so the book says he's not supposed to be good in, in, in pickup, in rush pickup. But he doesn't care. He's going to go out and he's going to stick his nose in and give his quarterback an opportunity because he's been rewarded with this pass game. Step up and make a block a little further to someone else. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. And a flag out. Like ball, ball start, start situation. number seven, offense. Yeah. Five-yard penalty, still first down. I think Rodgers was anticipating the snap that didn't come. So now, first and 15, they can pick up a first down at the two-yard line. Now, for this offense, that five yards means nothing. As close as they are, in fact, it might help them. And that is the end of the third quarter. So we played 45 minutes in Statesboro, Georgia Southern, looking for their first win of the season. They'll take a 27-21 lead to the final period, but the Aggies with a chance to reclaim the lead as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. Start of the fourth quarter in Statesboro. Matt Stewart along with Tioga Jackson. Georgia Southern 27-21 lead, but for how much longer as the Aggies have it at the Georgia Southern 17-yard line to begin this fourth quarter? I think fatigue is going to become a factor for both of these teams, but especially Georgia Southern because they've got some players out. Some players, they had players who've had to leave the game due to targeting. You know, do they have a rotation at this defensive line to continue to try to pressure this offense because we know New Mexico State is going to continue to throw the football for these final 15 minutes. They pass it to Kramer. This double. is a double pass. Kramer going downfield. Caught for the touchdown by Bryce Roberts, the tight end. The double pass. Last week, App State ran a double pass against the Aggies. This week, the Aggies run the double pass against the Eagles. We're tied at 27. Amazing call. And, and why is it an amazing call? Because of the area on the field. You just don't expect a double throw in the red zone. And you're throwing it to a guy who never catches the football in Bryce Roberts. Roberts with touchdown catches in consecutive weeks. He has only four catches this season, but two of them have gone for scores and both in the last two weeks. And now Dylan Brown will try to give the Aggies the lead with this PAT. He does. 28-27, Aggies on top. So nicely executed by New Mexico State on the first play of the fourth quarter. The former quarterback, Connor Kramer, takes the toss from Rodgers, and Kramer lofts it downfield for Roberts. That's six, and that's an Aggies lead. New Mexico State leads Georgia Southern 28-27. The Aggies got burned on this type play last week up in the mountains. They bring it down to Statesboro on this Saturday night, and they burn the Eagles with it. Yeah, they went motion into the boundary, and you've got man coverage here. And so I believe Rashad Bird has the back, and I think 26, Jay Baldry has the tight end. But he goes for the initial throw, the smoke route, and 
You got to plaster. You got to stay on your coverage. And man coverage, you cannot take your eyes off of your receiver. If you do, you're going to see him catch it for a touchdown. Let's see what uh, Dylan Brown can do here with the kickoff. Line drive kick's going to be taken at the 23-yard line this time by Rashad Bird. And Bird runs it up to the 42-yard line. So, again, they struggle with it. A line drive kick to one of the up blocking backs in great field position. Of course, the Eagles scored a touchdown on a similar type kick in the first half. What an adventure these kickoffs have been. I mean, usually kickoffs are very exciting plays. You don't want to go anywhere anyway, but you definitely don't want to do it tonight because anything could happen. Eight plays, 80 yards, 17-yard pass from Kramer to Roberts to cap that drive. And Doug Martin's team looking for their first conference win of the season after losses, tough, close losses to Troy and App State. Try to get their first conference win of the year here in 2017. Now the Eagles back on offense. Campbell goes in motion. They run a pitch to field. Campbell's out there to block for it. Throws a block. Doesn't get that guy, though as the tackle is made by Owens, the corner, for a loss back at the 39-yard line. Just too many guys to get a hat on out there. Well, Phil's got to be more patient. Watch him run into the back of his blocker. You see that right there? You should be making contact. Just be a little more patient. Let the blocking develop so you can then cut off of it. You know, you got to be fast, but you can't be too fast. Be quick and then be fast through the hole. He was fast early, didn't set up the blocking, and it just sort of blew up the entire play. Second down and 13. Eagles down a point here at home. 0-4 on the season, 0-1 on the conference. Shovel pass. And that's Godfrey again. They've run that play before tonight, and that gets them back to the 45. They pick up about seven on that one. And that, that again, is a little fast to me. I, I think that ball should be brought out to the corner a little bit more. Allow that thing to develop. See how quickly he gets rid of it? I mean, that allows the defense to then react to it. Draw that defense out to the perimeter. What that will do will create creases and running lanes for the back that you're going to throw it to. That's just another nuance to this game that number four will learn as he continues to get more snaps. How to show fakes a little bit better, how to draw the defense and then counter it with a nice little pitch. Shy Words making just his fifth career start, the redshirt freshman quarterback for the Eagles. There's some edge movement there. That might be a penalty on the Eagles. No flag was dropped. I thought that the Aggies had gotten across the line before the ball was snapped, and so did Tyson Summers. What a rush. Was well, that thought, your baby? <laughs> Wilcox that? must have timed that thing perfectly. I thought Wilcox Got off that edge a little bit too fast, but the officials didn't see it that way. Okay, that was and Wilcox. And now the uh, Eagles got a punt. Yeah, excuse, excuse me there. That was Wilcox. I mean, amazing get off. I mean, I, I want to see that again because he appeared to be offside, but he certainly tattooed Wirtz. Surprised Wirtz got up. Flynn bombs it away. Man, that's a bomb. Hits at the three and kicks out of bounds. What a punt by Matt Flynn. That is the second time tonight that he has nailed the Aggies inside the five-yard line. That was an absolute bomb. Amazing. <laughs> How many times does a ball roll forward in that situation? A 51-yard punt that kicks sideways out of bounds. And a timeout. Aggies back on offense with 13 to play when we get back. Aggies at the four-yard line after Matt Flynn's 50 or third 50-plus punt of the night. But going back to the previous play prior to the punt, we wondered if Wilcox had been offside. He just got a great jump off that right edge. Just a beautiful get off. Watch him get out of them stands. And you got to win the one-on-ones and pass pro and watch this guy get off. Yes, sir. And he's right behind. If you're even, you're leaving. Ryan Northrup is a converted guard for this game. He's supposed to be playing guard. Due to the injury of Boyton, he had to step out and play offensive tackle. Cedric Wilcox is giving him the business. Northrup making his 21st start tonight and his 20th consecutive, which leads the team. Huntley gets to the edge, and, man, he was about a tackle broken away from going 90-something yards. Yeah, I would continue to run the football. One of the advantages of throwing it early is it tires the defensive line out because they got to rush the passer. And then you got this guy who's Quicksilver, is the fastest player on the field. You continue to give him the ball in the backfield and running plays. It's a scary proposition for the defense. 
That's the eighth rush for Huntley tonight. He also has 10 catches. So that's 19 touches in a rather unconventional manner for Huntley. Nine rushes and 10 catches for the running back. Yeah, get it to him in all different ways. And they're starting to run the football now. They have a lead. It's only a one-point lead, but it's in the fourth quarter. They're starting to not pound the football. It's perimeter run, sort of a, a finesse running scheme. But anytime the ball is in number one's hands, again, it's a good thing for the guys in Bergen. They throw it to Jaleel Scott out here, and he'll step out of bounds at the 28-yard line. That's close to a first down for Jaleel Scott with his fifth catch of the night. Let's talk about the, the, the efficiency of Tyler Rogers. I mean, so often you get... You get used to a guy like him just throwing to the open man and the ball's completed, no big deal. Just think of how many times around college football they're errant throws, unnecessary picks because the ball is inaccurate or not thrown on time. When this guy gets his feet set, he's able to survey. He has laser accuracy. Huntley with the carry. Nothing doing that time as Huntley got chopped down at the line of scrimmage. Cooper and... De La Rosa making the tackle. But Huntley right at 125 yards of total offense tonight. Rodgers, 333 yards passing. He averages 352 a game. I know that's a mind-boggling number, <laughs> which leads the Sun Belt. It's number five in the nation. Pass fired over the head of Agonon. But you think about that, we're still in an age where a 300-yard passing game is still a, it's a big deal. It's a benchmark, no and he's averaging 350 again. That's amazing, and it's a testament really to this scheme and how well it's coached by Doug Martin. They get guys open, and it's also a testament to his ability to get better and better. I saw him two years ago. He was not the same quarterback. He's a really good, accurate thrower now. Third and ten, Rodgers in trouble, going to run, try to get to the sticks. And it was Vleem who made the tackle at the 36 and kept him from getting a first down. Trevor Vleem, remember he's getting some run here with Raymond Johnson on the sideline with his injury. Ran a twist up front. They exchanged lanes between the tackle and the nose, and they came free. And this Vleem guy is playing well. He's making a statement that he needs to continue to play no matter who's healthy and who's not. Gleam had only three tackles the entire season coming into tonight's game. Right. I'm sure he's doubled that by now. I love Rodgers' competitiveness. He's trying to get that first down. Fake situation here. Fourth down and two. Do you think they'll fake it? I think they're just trying to get Georgia Southern to burn a timeout. True. And the Eagles don't do it. Instead, the Aggies take the timeout. Well, I think they were trying to draw them offside, really. That's what they were trying to do, get a cheap five. This, this is an alert fake situation this part of the field but the Eagles weren't going for it on that offside situation in fact App did the same thing New Mexico State last week as you take a look at the scoreboard App State came back from the 20 to nothing deficit to win at Idaho 23-20 Georgia State knocked ULM from the ranks of the unbeaten of the conference the Warhawks had been leading the standings at 3-0 and Georgia State goes on the road and wins 47-37. Arkansas State leading by 10 at halftime. And then in the midweek game, South Alabama and Louisiana were winners. Just another crazy week in the Sun Belt Conference. You have got to love football in the South. Fun belt. <laughs> Fourth down and two here. And now the Aggies do line up the punt. Rugby-style kick that's wobbly going down the field. Caught by Campbell at the 25. And finally slung to the ground right there at the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Jonathan Hood as we take a look at the updated standings. In the Sun Belt, App State now at 3-0. Georgia State 2-0. And Arkansas State at 1-0. Three unbeaten teams remaining in conference play. Georgia State will be playing host to Troy next week in Atlanta. That's the thing about conference play. It doesn't really matter what happened before conference begins. It's all about these conference schedule wins. The 
That's what cer certainly keeps Georgia Southern engaged. They only 0-1. That's not too far behind. They got plenty nope. of time, plenty of schedule left. And that's the and that was the message for uh, Tyson Summers this week is that he said, look, we got a long way to go. We are 0-4, 0-1 in the conference. Still a lot of football. I feel like we're getting better every week. And I think, uh, you know, I think this ball game is a game where they've gotten better. This has probably been their best all-around game to this point. There's no question about but it. But can they get the win? That's the big thing. There you go. Because this game is far from over, and they have yet to really stop consistently this New Mexico State offense. Uh, last, last series, they stepped up and played good defense, got them off the field. But for the most part, it's been New Mexico State's miscues that sort of corralled themselves. And after the penalty on Georgia Southern, the Aggies – Go back out there on offense at the 42-yard line, the roughing the kicker penalty against the Eagles. See how costly that's going to be. Pass intended downfield at the 39-yard line for Huntley is incomplete. And the other storyline here, as we started this game back at 6 o'clock local time, our story for New Mexico State, Tioka, was can the Aggies close it out. They've been in these situations in their two previous conference games against Troy, against App State, and didn't close it out and get the win. Yes, and the reason why they're always in this situation, they while they are improved defense, they don't have a great defense. And so they're always in tight ball games. And so finishing the game has been the mantra all week. Let's see if they can get it done tonight. Rogers fires. Intercepted at the 50-yard line. Montquavian Brinson comes up with the second pick of the night. Huge play for Brinson. He has been amazing tonight, but Greg Hogan fell down. The route was there, but he fell down and couldn't get up and make a play on that ball and made it easy for Brinson. He fell down early in the route, tried to get back up, and I think Rodgers has got to see that. There was really no receiver to throw it to once he fell down. He's throwing it on a timing situation, expecting for Hogan to be there. There's the no fall. foul on the play. First down, Georgia Southern. And the fall negated that. That's the first real mistake. I think Rodgers should have been able yep. to see that the receiver had lost his footing. He should have went somewhere else with the ball. That's the first mistake, and it's a, it's a big, crucial one. Brinson, their second leading tackler tonight. He's got five stops, four solo, and now two picks. And it gives the Eagles the ball at the Aggies' 47-yard line. Handoff Ramsby, wrapped up by Harrington. No running room. Guess who was the tackle? Harrington with his 14th tackle <laughs> of the game. Ferguson has 13, so you got those two linebackers right there have accounted for 27 tackles between them. He told you he averages 10 a game, which puts them at 10th in all the FBS. Those numbers are going up tonight. This guy, Harrington, is something special. Second down and 10. Eagles down a point on their home field. Ramsby again. And Lopez in on that tackle, and a flag comes out. So we could have some manner of unsportsmanlike penalty right here as the teams are having to be separated at the 43-yard line. So we'll check the call here. This could be a devastating penalty either way if it's a 15-yard mark off. After the play, personal foul, fighting, number 75, offense. That player's disqualified, 15-yard oh penalty, third down. The Eagles just had their starting center ejected from the game. The backup is a freshman. Unbelievable. Curtis Rainey becomes the third Georgia Southern player to be ejected from this game. Unbelievable. They just don't have enough depth to go through this sort of attrition. Especially when the it's, it's really unforced, self-inflicted problems. I mean, you can't see what's going on there. I mean, obviously, the official's all over. He's right there. Something egregious must have happened. But for what? Tough guys play within the rules and do it physically. And when you're not mentally tough, you throw punches in the pile. 
Drake Grawl is now checked in at center. Wirt's going to go to the air and fire. Complete to Fortune at the 45-yard line. They got a lot of it back right there. But Drake Grawl is the new center. He's a redshirt junior and not the young man listed as the freshman back up on the depth chart. You know, you got to be alert to all the shotgun plays, all the snaps. you got to be alert when getting snaps under center. When you bring in your backup center, just the quarterback center exchange becomes an issue for the rest of the night. So fourth down now, the Eagles got to kick it away with eight minutes to play in this ball game. If I was Tyson Summers, I would get Shy Wirtz and their new center over on the sidelines working snaps right now. Flynn has had himself a big night. And this was a short kick this time. And it hits straight up and down, down by Bird at the 19. So that's the first time that uh, Flynn has not executed 100%. But it still puts the Aggies at the 19-yard line, 81 yards away. And more importantly for the Eagles now, just 7.58 remaining. And remember, this is an Eagles team that the clock becomes your enemy when you're an option team and you're not a passing team. And if you get it back and not a lot of time left on the clock. Yeah, I, you know, at this point, it's not an issue. But certainly we're starting to knock on the door where the clock will become an issue. And if you're the Aggies, continue to do what you're doing because you can move the football from anywhere on the field by throwing. Rodgers goes back to the air. It's complete to Hogan. And he gets slung out of bounds at the 27-yard line. But I tell you what, though, Matt, if you run the football a couple times here and there, the clock can become an issue. And so I wouldn't abandon it. Again, I've been talking about it all night. I think it's their form because you're playing against a defense who's in base nickel with backups all over the field. Only 15 rushes for the Aggies tonight, playing without their star running back, Larry Rose. Keeper this time by Rodgers as he makes it to the 34 and no more. Brinson putting a lick on him. But he picks up the first down with that carry right there, and that'll move the clock a little bit more. That means even if the Eagles come up with the stop here, it's going to be under five minutes probably before they get the ball back. Yeah, and that, that really puts the handcuffs on an option team like we talked about before. Rodgers going back to the air and firing. It is caught across midfield. Another first down for... The Aggies, that is Muse with the catch. That's his fourth catch of the game. And the clock is running in. What you're seeing right now, these pass rushers who were getting it done early in the game, they're getting tired now. And the pass rush is nearly non-existent. And we talked about it. If you don't rush this guy, Tyler Rogers will kill you in the pocket, and he's doing it right now. First and 10 from the 49. Huntley gets the handoff, dances in the hole, makes bird miss. Trying to clear the edge, and he does, and Bleem makes the tackle, but way downfield at the 41-yard line. Three guys had a shot at him for a TFL and came up empty. Yeah, he's just he's too quick for these guys. And like we said, fatigue is going to be a factor, and it's starting to show up. Look at him keep it alive. Look at the competitiveness, and then the speed and quickness to the outside. Really impressed with him. Now, here's a stat that, that really will make it hard for all the Georgia Southern fans to feel really good right now. Georgia Southern is 0-10 when giving up 25 points or more under Coach Summers. And right now, 28 points is where the Aggies sit. So it's it's looking really bad right now. Huntley gets the handoff again, makes another man miss. Oh, he's off to the races. And there he goes. A flag is out as well, I believe, as he gets tripped up at the 23-yard line by Moon and then stumbled forward to the 18. Did I see a flag or did I imagine that? No, it was a flag, definitely. Yeah, there it is. The flag is back in, at the 32. It's in the area of holding, too. Using me holding. Yep. Six on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Replay, second down. That stops the bleeding, at least for the moment. Hogan, I think. Was it Hogan? No. Number seven or Agonon? It's Agonon. Josh Agonon on the outside. Called him for the holding, and he's beside himself. He thinks he didn't do it. But it's obvious what the game plan coming in for Doug Martin was, especially when they lost Larry Rose. We're going to throw the football and set up the run with these pass rushers who get tired later on. And that's right out of Mike Martin's playbook, my former coach. He liked to throw the football in the first half, run the ball in the second, because those D linemen would be tired. 
And that's exactly what you're seeing right now. Second and three, Huntley gets to the sticks and picks up the first down. De La Rosa tackles him going out of bounds, but that will give the Aggies a fresh set of downs to work with. And now five and a half minutes to play on the game clock. Look at the foot quickness. Look at the bounce. He's got tremendous lateral quickness and balance. If I'm playing against him, I want to funnel that ball inside. He's not a great inside between the tackles runner, but if he can bounce the ball outside, he is a nightmare to corral. Rodgers fires to the sideline, and Brinson nearly jumped the route and got himself another pick. Was able to deflect it out of bounds, and now it's going to be second down. He read that all the way in zone coverage. He almost ran the route for the receiver and nearly came up with a huge play. Brinson's already got two picks here tonight. He's got three on the season after getting a pick in the last game as well. He's only a sophomore. There are young players all over this roster for Georgia Southern. We talked about the future being bright, but right now they're trying to win a tight football game. Second down, Rodgers going to run. He's going to be stopped. Tackled back at the 41-yard line by Logan Hunt. Logan Hunt came into the game tied for the lead in sacks with Ty Phillips. And I thought that Rodgers sort of panicked too early. The pocket wasn't really broken down. He had time, and he felt like he didn't have time. And that's what a pass rush all game will do to a quarterback. It'll speed you up, and he tried to take off too early. And a timeout called on the field with 4.59 to play and a big third and 13 coming up when we get back. Four minutes and 59 seconds. Georgia Southern has won the time of possession battle the entire game. But here in the fourth quarter, the Aggies have held the ball for close to seven minutes. And the Eagles just over two. I thought that was an excellent use of timeout by Tyson Summers. Give his chance, guys a chance to rest and go rush the passer. Third and 13. Rodgers goes downfield. Got a man open. It's caught at the 20-yard line for a first down. Muse was able to find himself open way downfield for his fifth catch of the game. That gives him over 100 yards of receiving. What a read by Rodgers under duress. Watch, he's got a guy in his face again. Makes a beautiful read and throw. Wow, this guy's so impressive. And Muse had been a short yardage guy the entire season, averaging less than 10 yards per catch. Here tonight, he's over 21 yards per catch. Mm. First and 10, ball at the 21-yard line. They're taking their time, which is really intelligent. And off Huntley, makes De La Rosa miss, and then tackled downfield at the 15-yard line by Logan Hunt. So this is, to set this up right now, this is it's obvious what has to happen. If you're the Aggies, you have got to get the ball in the end zone. you got to find a way to score a touchdown. If you're the Eagles, you got to play great red zone defense and force a kick because you got to make sure that this stays a one possession ball game. Aggies taking their sweet time at the line of scrimmage. 499 yards of total offense for New Mexico State tonight. Georgia Southern 256, so approaching a double up. I think if the Aggies, Aggies score a touchdown, they're going to go for two to try to make a nine point game. Handoff goes to Huntley, clears the edge inside the 10 on the cutback, got tripped up at the six-yard line. That'll be a first down for New Mexico State. That was Brinson who came up and clicked his ankles. First and goal to go for the Aggies, and the clock is still running, 328. Got to make him kick a field goal here. Touchdown will be near disaster. I think the Aggies right now are thinking about scoring here and already coming up with their best two-point play because that would make it a nine-point game and effectively end it if they do score a touchdown. Eight on the play clock. Aggies going to run it all the way down if they can. Keeper Rodgers. Rodgers runs right into Bleem at the six and Moon. They decided to go with the same play they did when they first touched down. Read option and the keeper by Rodgers. I expected them to go for it, but I thought they would do it a little bit closer to the end zone to mimic exactly what happened in the first quarter. But usually, offensive coordinators will repeat plays that are successful, and that was a successful play for them in the first quarter. You see the time on the play clock, and the Aggies doing a job of milking it down. 
If you were the Eagles, would you be burning timeouts here? And At this point, no. I, I think you start using them after the two-minute time. You got to get you got to get your defense in there to make a play for you right now. And Huntley gets smushed at the five-yard line, one-yard pickup. Bleem was in there to blow that thing up. And Ty Phillips in there as well. And now Georgia Southern does use their second timeout. Brings up a third down and goal from the five. Georgia Southern at 0-4. 0-1 in the conference, trying to pick up their first win of the season. They'll be at UMass against one of the other five winless teams in the country. That's next Saturday, so one way or the other, somebody's going to get a win at Troy. And then Georgia State will be their next home game on November 4th, and their only other home game on the schedule, November 18th against South Alabama, the team that just upset Troy on national television Thursday night. What you like there, you're selling your young team that we have a chance to do some damage in this conference. We got a lot of conference games coming up and we can make some hay before this thing is over. Still trying to win this one here tonight. New Mexico State trying to do something they haven't done and that's finish off a game in the conference. Now this is the area of the field where I would dial up some pressure. You're in the red zone, not a lot of field to defend. Bring pressure, see if you can get a negative play on this quarterback. Third and goal from the five. Rodgers, pressure coming, throws it up for Jaleel Scott. And did he make the catch? He did for the touchdown. My goodness. Jaleel Scott using all six, six of himself to get that one and score the touchdown. Very tight coverage. They bought the blitz. It was coming free. And when you're 6'6", six, six, you can do that all day long. 6'6", six, six, 215 pounds. You can't knock him off his spot. He's got great hands and great strength. Tremendous football player, this Jaleel Scott. Well, they'll kick the single point here and make it an eight-point game. I think that's the thing to do because, you know, if Georgia Southern is able to score a touchdown, then it's incumbent on them to get the two-pointer. But, I, you know, I think you go for two to get the win, though, partner. I think, it, you know. Well, I think the I think the one here makes it eight, makes it very difficult for Georgia Southern. No question about that. It's difficult either way. No matter what happens here with two minutes to go, it's different. It's difficult either way. I just think. You, you go for the win with three yards. Three yards to win the game puts it away. Dylan Brown puts it through. It's an eight-point lead for New Mexico State. They've never beaten Georgia Southern. They are now two minutes and five seconds away from doing that. And a flag out as well. Let's check the call here. Four. Defense. That penalty's declined. The points for size good. The Eagles. That will be declined by the Aggies. So this game's this. not over yet because, remember, New Mexico State has struggled mightily in the kick coverage game. And, and that's why you go for two. I mean, you know, that's why you, you need three yards to win the game. I, no, you, I hear you. And, you, you know, you got a hot quarterback. you got a red zone threat that they can't cover. I, I just I think that that – it may not come back to haunt them, but if it does, we'll be talking about it more. But I just think the decision to go for two was the right one because you'd win the game. I like to be aggressive. Put well, it in my hands, yeah. get three yards, game's over. Doug Martin's team gets a week off next week. They've played seven consecutive weeks without a bye, and they finally get to go home and play Arkansas State on October 28th. And they've played a difficult schedule. I mean, five of their first seven games counting tonight have been on the road with no buys. I know you and I thought both of these teams were better than their record. I think we've seen that sort of performance tonight, though. So here comes the kickoff from Dylan Brown. He will kick it away. And Campbell will take it a yard deep in the end zone and bring it out. Miles Campbell to the 20. And Campbell up to the 20. Let's see where they spot it. 28, 29. About 71, 72 yards for the Eagles to go. And they've got to score a touchdown. And then they've got to score a two-point conversion to force overtime. Yes, and, and if I'm on defense, I don't go man coverage. You don't want people with their back running away from this quarterback because he will scramble and rip you. I think you play zone, force him to look for the open receiver and throw an accurate ball. And if he does break contain, you have eyes on the quarterback to come up and rally. Wirtz is only 6 of 8 passing for 73 yards tonight. Can they throw the ball? 
downfield in what is an obvious two-minute drill situation. Works pressure, goes down. Wilcox gets him on the ground at the 21-yard line, and the clock is rolling. Wilcox has been big all night. He comes around the corner and beats his man again one-on-one. -on -one. You got pass rushes. It's a very comforting feeling for a defensive corner not having to blitz. Second down and long now. Hanks lines up off the edge, comes on a heavy rush, works flushed out of the pocket, motioning for his receivers to run, and he's going to step out of bounds, and they take more loss on the play. Third down. That's just another mistake by a young quarterback. you got to throw that ball away. Two things happen. You lose yardage, and that's not good for the whole team, but then you also take a sack, which is, is hurting your, your offensive line and their stats. It, it, it's demeaning to the offensive line to just run out of bounds when you don't have to. Just throw the ball away, save the yards. Third and 17, the Eagles have to get to the 38 to get the first down. And we're down to 125 to play. The Eagles do have one timeout remaining. Wirtz has yet to get a pass off. Going to heave it downfield, looking for Fortune, and Fortune can't come up with it at the 29. Owens, the corner, was running step for step with him, and now the Eagles are facing a fourth and 17. Nice effort by Words to get it out there, and this was either going to be a pass interference or an incomplete pass because the coverage was tight. And yes, he got a little handsy, but I don't think that was enough to give him advantage and throw the flag. So I think that's a good no call. What do you think? I agree, and you know, this is the problem with the option offense. You have no intermediate passing game. I mean, right. your, your options are really throw the ball downfield when you get the ball in, in this type situation. Yeah, they're really a fish out of water in this situation. you, you got to hope for a P.I. or a missed tackle to run for the first down. Fourth and 17, Hanks coming off the edge. Wirtz going to step up, and he's going to run. Can he pick up 17 yards, gets to the sideline? He's not going to get there, or did he? Ball came out after he was hit at the 37-yard line. The Eagles say they recovered on the plus side of the sticks, and we'll have to check the call down on the field. That's why I wouldn't blitz in this situation and run man coverage, because you give an opportunity for a guy like that to get downfield, play zone coverage, and let your guys see the break of the, of the uh, pocket and, and rally up to make the tackle. They're still trying to figure this thing out. I think he was short of the sticks, and the ball would go over on downs. Yeah, I don't think that was a fumble at all. I think the ground calls it. I think he's short. Or do you think he tossed it forward? Yeah, and that's another thing. He might have did it on purpose. The old Kenny Staple play. Throwing on the fumble field forward. is the ball carrier fumbled the ball forward. Therefore, the ball is returned to the spot of his fumble, which is short of the line of the game. It'll yep. be first down, New Mexico State. There you go. That's right. And so the ball will go over on downs, and the Aggies are going to get the win here tonight. Even if this was a legitimate fumble, which I'm not sure it was, but even if it was on fourth down in this time of the game, that's the rule. They do not allow a ball to be fumbled forward and recovered. It always will go back right. to the spot of the fumble. So It's the Kenny Stabler rule. That's right. Uh, and, he, you know, he didn't. It, it, the ball legitimately did come out. It did, yep. He did not toss it forward. It legitimately came out. But the rule is that you cannot fumble forward to pick up a first down in that situation. And there's a man down right now. Is that Wirtz? I think that's Wirtz. He still has not gotten up off the field after that hit at the 37-yard line. So That's a real problem there. No, no doubt about it. What? What's going to turn into a loss here tonight hopefully does not turn into more than just a loss with the loss of your starting quarterback. So the Aggies will take over. All they have to do is take a knee from here on out. The Eagles do have one timeout remaining, but there's nothing that the Eagles can do outside of a mistake by the Aggies. And they continue to tend to works on the sideline. I think he might have gotten hit in the head by the tackler's leg. That's right coming over there to make the tackle. Yeah, I think he I think he took a knee in the back of the helmet. Yeah, good eye, man. That's exactly what happened. And so this could be a concussion type situation. Yeah, concussion protocol is yeah, I mean, in because, full effect. Yep, he took a knee to the back of the helmet. He looks a little woozy. Well, he fought. That young player fought tonight. And 
his teammates fought with him. They, you know, they didn't play like an 0-4 football team, like a, a team that doesn't have anything to play for. They came out on homecoming night, honored some of the great players that have ever played here on this field, and they showed really good fight here. And uh, it's certainly disappointing they'll be 0-5, but you got to give them an A for the type of effort and execution that we saw all night. It just wasn't quite good enough. So the Aggies go into their victory formation as Rodgers takes a knee at the 42-yard line. And the clock will run. Georgia Southern won't stop it. There's no need to because they can't do anything with it even if they stop it once. And New Mexico State will have defeated Georgia Southern for the first time in program history after losing the first three games in the series. Aggies will be 1-2 and two in the conference heading into their bye week. And the Georgia Southern Eagles will drop to 0-5 overall heading into their game against winless UMass next Saturday up north. And they did it without Larry Rose III, yep. one of the best players in the conference. Uh, Tyler Rogers put it on his back and carried this offense. And Jaleel Scott is a flat-out superstar. That's what he is. We'll see him playing in the National Football League. There's no question in my mind about that. But they've got a tremendous tandem. And Jason Huntley is the future of the running game yeah. for this Aggie program. Huntley finishes with 186 yards of total offense, 16 carries, 99 yards, 11 receptions, and 87 yards. Tyler Rogers, 31 of 51 passing for 382 and three touchdowns. And defensively, Dalton Harrington had 15 tackles tonight. Wow. Javon Ferguson had 14. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the stars stepped up. You lose your biggest star in Larry Rose, but everybody rallied the troops and played really good football on the road. And usually what you need to bring on the road is a running game. You can't turn it over. You got to play good defense. Well, they turn it over just once. They were able to overcome that. Played really good defense when it mattered. And their star quarterback carried it. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app or to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to ESPN.com or watch ESPN.com or download the watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN and now for Kyoka Jackson and the entire ESPN crew. I'm Matt Stewart. So long where New Mexico State beats Georgia Southern 35-27.